It's the Bennington Show, and that is Esther Koo, who just <laughs> left us that beautiful song yesterday. Thanks, Esther. <laughs> Chibomato 1999. Yukahanda knows her water. Uh, tell everybody who the band is. That's Chibomato, a very weird Japanese duo from the mid nineties, I believe, that mm-hmm. they continued on doing stuff in the early aughts. I don't know if they're still recording, but Sean Lennon used to produce stuff for them, and they're super weird. And they're perfect for Weird Song Week. Yeah, sure. Because they're a bunch of weirdos. They're weirdos, but uh, you know they bring that cool magic. A lot of people are writing <laughs> to me, actually, people I know. Uh, going, what's the story with Esther Koo? And I go, she's a person that has a life. What do you mean, what's the story with? <laughs> what Everybody story? gets a little, you know, like, what's what's her whole background? What's happening there? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Stop being creepy. All right, it's the Bennington Show. I'm Ron Bennington. Gail Bennington. Yo. Uh, the kid who had the spotlight yesterday, Joey Jojo Bennington. Hello. Uh, and <laughs> Joey, did we ever come da- back down to what was... Uh, Joey's uh, biggest song that we decide. Or are we tied at two? I feel like we might be tied for two. Yeah. How yeah. did we feel about the coup song? Like, where did that stand up? We liked the- it. I don't think Esther was a big fan or got the reference or really picked up on the fact that her last, you know, last name was being used so well. <laughs> I think it was just a blur for her. Oh, God. That's so yes. Joey. You know, <laughs> when I hear you do cheap word play, I'm like, oh, my God. That's oddly brilliant. How about uh, Chris Stanley got enough sleep last night? Yes. Bennington, nice to see you. Sup. Good to see you. Second day hangover is much more manageable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Totally gone. Uh, you've lost your computer privileges and Vito is ready to step up and not even to check in with me. Just sitting at his station. Yes. Interesting. It was it's actually all on, startling. All on top of him. I don't know whether I should just keep going from story to story, run him through the gauntlet, or just treat <laughs> it like again. it's normal. Yeah. I mean, why do I feel you have this thing of, okay, rookie, welcome to the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> the hazing begins now. Oh, yeah. It's Panther time. By the way, anyone I talk to just thinks that the Panthers are going to win by 100 points, which, what does Vegas know that we don't? You Seems know? weird, right? What is Vegas fucking with because apparently they took all that uh patriot money <laughs> last week why wouldn't they be on this um all right here's one of my favorite uh kind of comedy news stories today robin williams giant house was sold now it was sold for 18.5 million dollars and they took a a major loss on it but because uh, they wanted to, to get 30 million. And apparently this is one of the things that was hanging over his head when the shitty CBS show got canceled. Because I, I remember thinking, why would anyone care? That show wasn't good for you. Right. That girl was terrible. But apparently those paychecks would have been nice because he was living in the Don Cesar. Uh, look at the size of this That's house. His house. That's his crib. Now, remember, his children are grown up and they've, you know, on the lives of his own. So why would anyone want to live in this giant building? What, why do people love giant houses to begin with? I, I notice, like, if you look out at the, um, at the Hamptons, some of these people are like, I bought an $80 million beach house. You're going to drag sand through it. Why do you, what are you doing with that <laughs> house out there? You, if you're at the beach, you should have a cottage, not Does, a castle. Doesn't it seem like it would be a lot cooler to have lots of little places all you over know, the place? Yeah, all over the place. Yeah, like apartments in every... Yeah, you could have a, a sweet condo in most of the cool cities in the world. Yeah. You know, you'd have a, a London condo, a Paris condo, New York, San Francisco condo. But he's up, he was up there in wine country. And I guess I get the point that you would want a lot of land. I, I totally get... Oh, it takes a half hour to get up my driveway, and there my house is. And you know, well, I, when somebody has one of those cribs in Montana, I get that. I don't know why you want a giant house. I get the idea of like wanting a little more space. You're like, okay, I have the money, I can afford to do it. Right, how but many this bedrooms? is so excessive. How many bedrooms do you max out at? I don't think anyone needs any more than four bedrooms, and that's if you're like a very I say I say five if your mother in law is living with you. You know what I mean? Because right. you got to get to a place where you're going to say, 
You know, this house is so big, we ought to let your mother move in. You know? <laughs> we're not and even going to see her. And that becomes a problem because now you're living with your mother in law when you were just <laughs> chilling before. You know, you might, you'd be better off buying your mother in law a place. Yeah, then you wouldn't have to worry about it. I get having a lot of property that's got to be a wonderful feeling to say, these are my woods. That's my lake that I stock. I get that. I don't know why you want to say, we have 18 bedrooms, and I'm not sure how many bathrooms. I think 23. I don't know where the fucking head is there. And how many of those are half baths? That's the problem. <laughs> I wouldn't have a half bath if I was going to have a place that Baller? big. Everybody had that. What you're saying is, I don't want you coming anywhere near me when you stay over. <laughs> but why do you want people to stay over your house? Johnny Carson had a place on the beach in Malibu. Nice giant crib. It was a one bedroom. <laughs> he did, there was sorry. I think there's a hotel down the street. I don't know why. And let alone now, here's Robin Williams, which by the way, I don't know if you could have any more success than the man have. He was a giant touring comedian, uh Grammy winner for his albums, Oscar winner in film, so the film career lasted twenty five, thirty years of you know, he opens movies. And yet he's still sitting around going, shit, man, I got to make my nut. I don't know what I'm going to do. Calling his agent. Can't you get me a commercial or anything? <laughs> that sounds fucking crazy to me. Yeah, because you're putting yourself in that position to struggle. And then here's the other thing that happens. When you have a house this big, uh, who are you going to sell it to when you're ready to leave? So you're suddenly down to where there's maybe eight people that can afford your crib right. anywhere in your neighborhood. And then you're like, I already have a giant house, so no, I don't need to buy your giant house. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I don't know. I do already have a big house. I like your house. But at thirty million, I don't know. Knock that down a little bit. <laughs> I mean, and he's you know, he was like in wine country or something. So you think there would have been some Google people. But like you said, they got their own houses. They don't want your big stupid fucking house, Robin. His pool, in that initial picture, his pool was as big as the house. Did okay, like, it? look at that, that picture of that pool. <laughs> look, that's All right, now, crazy. Uh, yeah, that, who takes care of that pool? <laughs> Robin ain't out there every day. So, you, so you're like, oh, I've got this big house with a lot of room, so I'm on my own. Then you look out the window and you see fucking workmen. People are fucking pruning and mowing and cleaning, and you're like, I can't get any peace here. <laughs> <laughs> then at night, when everybody leaves and you just you and they're drunk, it's like The Shining. You're like, what the fuck did you just hear a hundred yards away? Oh yeah, are you kidding? That would be the scariest. And what if like you're you're like watching the game, you fucking think that you want a sandwich, you don't want to get up from the game, you're yelling to your chick, she's three four hundred yards away. <laughs> you know, she's in the sewing room. <laughs> Uh, and has to take a fucking golf cart to come in and go, no, make your own sandwich. But the game's on. Can't you do me this one thing? I got this giant fucking house for us. You got a giant house. Yeah, that's what, then okay. also you're living with fucking maids and shit. This is insane. Looking at this picture, my entire apartment could fit in this shot of a living room? Probably right. not even. Sun room, I think. No, yeah, yeah. They, that doesn't even look like your typical family room like obviously yeah, there's we, no tv in there so this is just like a entertainment it, room it's to throw a party in yeah you throw a party once a year instead of going to the ramada and renting out that fucking big room they have <laughs> 400 for, bucks. yeah, yeah for 400 bucks 800 if you want a fucking bartender <laughs> and an open bar for an hour but why do you need the tea room for after luncheon like this is like yes. some other this is like some third tier living room and my entire apartment could fit in there. And At least. seriously, you could e easily move into that room and be happy as fuck. Oh, yeah. All right, here's Jason in Detroit. Hey, Ron. Elder Bennington. Hey, Ron. Um, I know Michael Jordan, and I thought of another one. Build this. Michael Jordan built this massive house outside of Chicago. And it's been trying to be for sale for at least, I got to say, 15 years. And then Steve Hammer built that great house, but it was like overlooking Oakland, and nobody was going to buy it for what it was. Yeah, that bankrupt him. Uh, you know, because first of all, you get there and it's all decked out in MC Hammer shit. You're like, what is this? 94? I don't fucking need this. But yeah, Michael Jordan built that beautiful home, ridiculous. Oh, he is 
you know, basically what he had was a lot of public areas that he owned himself. So he had his own giant theater, not just like a, you know, room with a big screen that you with eight chairs. And he had a theater, he had a basketball court and shit. And no one else could fucking would want that. How often do you think you're playing tennis on your own personal course? If you're not a tennis player, how often do you Twice think? a year. Yeah, but you know what? You can kind of look at a pool the same way. Like, when you own a pool, you start to think to yourself, fuck, how often am I in that pool? You look <laughs> over and there's always little kids in there and you're worried they're drowning. <laughs> so you're standing next to the pool like you were a, a dumb lifeguard. Um, Yeah, it's a, uh, that's his basketball court. It's a full his house. court. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Well, this is what, and then it says Jordan on one end. In case he forgets. Yeah, in case he forgets. That's Jordan's fucking Where court. Where am I? Oh, oh yeah, my it, own home. It took him years to sell it, and he sold it at a loss. And look, he's got a giant 23 Jesus. as you come in. He really into himself. Yeah, well, you know, he was Michael Jordan. I mean, if you're going to be into anybody, you know? The only person that would probably want that fucking place is Cam Newton. <laughs> He'll put dab on the front of it instead. It's just like, the thing is... You well, well, there's a piece up on the iBank today too in the wire that a huge percentage of people, sixty eight percent of people, run into some kind of credit problem by the time they're thirty, right? And there's we're looking at guys that run into credit problems no matter how much money they make. This is what's fucking wrong with the with the human beast. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> that you think to yourself. I almost can afford it, so I want it. No matter how much money you have. Uh, another story is that Bloomberg says he's going to spend a billion dollars of his own money yeah. if he runs for fucking president. <laughs> I mean, if that isn't crazy. And yet, we're at the point now where it looks like anyone who's not a billionaire probably shouldn't run for president. I mean, the, the idea is, okay, first of all, Bloomberg would never win. Uh, certainly f at this juncture, he would not win. So that's a, a billion dollars wasted. Billion dollars. <laughs> that maybe Just, he could be running around like Bill Gates and trying to fucking yeah. save babies in Africa. Are you kidding me? It's not going to work out, Bloomby. Um, here's uh, Chris in uh, Phoenix. Hey guys, um, Al Capone had his own island in the Northeast and uh, used to run bootleg liquor out of it. Well, see, that was a working expense. I get that completely. <laughs> he probably wasn't there much, but his guys were. You know? do, he gets to write it off. It's fine. Well, he needed a place to, you know, gas up his uh, his boats, a uh, place the guys could clean their guns, <laughs> bury people. <laughs> And, you know, you save a little money because you make the guys that you killed dig their own holes. <laughs> yeah. First, first of all, dig. this is the thing. I, I would put this in a movie. All right. So we had that blizzard and they were bragging about there being no fatalities, except for the five dudes in New York who dropped dead shoveling snow. They just dropped dead shoveling snow. They had a heart attack and died. In a movie where someone has to dig their own grave, why doesn't somebody have a heart attack? <laughs> Fucking fall That's over. Perfect. It'd be hilarious. How much deeper? <laughs> I really don't do a lot of upper body work. <laughs> this is so bad for me. <laughs> Tired. My cardio is not good. And you know, this has been around my whole life that digging holes kills people every winter. Like I remember being a little kid and hearing uh, that, that the guy said on TV when I was a kid, let your wife shovel out the thing because she's actually moving around the house doing stuff all year like a homemaker and you're just going to work and coming home and drinking on your couch please don't shut up it's not going to be good for your big fat heart yes your big <laughs> oversized <laughs> fucking greasy heart can't handle it so five people drop dead yet you never hear about anybody that's being forced to dig their own grave dropping over and dying that'd be a fucking hilarious scene that's perfect also why does anyone agree to it I'll never know you know where this is going, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, everyone always seems to be bartering as they're digging. Like, is there any way that we could Maybe not? that's why they do it, just to have a little more time. <laughs> but I'd say, look, kill me and leave me laying here. <laughs> I don't want to go in that hole. Just leave me laying here, not mm -hmm. under this tree. Yeah. 
Why don't you put me up in a tree and shoot me up there? That, who's going to find me? <laughs> I'll be up really high in the tree. I'll climb. I just don't want to dig a hole. It's too much. There's another great scene from a movie. Climb the fucking tree. Don't make me do it. Please. Look into your heart. <laughs> We're not like these bastards. <laughs> Look into your heart, please. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Not a word. Um, uh, Robert Birmingham. Robert. Hey, Bennington. Hey. Uh, yeah, uh, around Birmingham, there, there have been a, more than one uh, CEOs, uh, one who, Richard Scucci, that went to prison, and a, a couple of couple of others that had built these, like, $19, $20 million mansions. And as the economy swings and their, their businesses, uh, you know, wane, eventually they want to sell them. How many buyers do you think there are in the Birmingham area that can buy a $20 million mansion? They sit on the market. Years and years and years. I remember Vander Holyfield had a place that I think either fucked him up, uh, bankrupt him or something. But he, his swimming pool was a giant boxing glove. It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Tyson had a huge mansion that like went into disrepair because you could never sell it. Fifty Cent has a place up in like fucking Connecticut. Yeah, but far away from any part of Connecticut <clears throat> that anybody wants to be in. Uh, Earl's uh, parents went up there with a, on a bus. Uh, the, like the church group was invited up or something. They know his aunt, and they all went up. Whose place is that one? That's 50 cents. 50, that's... that's first of all, that looks like a getaway place in the summer. You know what I mean? That's his everyday thing. For, right? uh, for a hotel. It's like a hotel that's opened up. Just in the summers. And there's the boathouse. Yeah, uh, Ronnie, see if Chris can find that Richard Scrooge, uh, uh house. Well, Chris can't find uh, shit. It, Vito's all over it today. A million <laughs> times better than Chris, still. I forget Chris is a drunk. What? <laughs> You're a drunk, dude. That's the reputation you have right now. Live with it. and Embrace it. It's a good thing. I mean, if you of. wanted to keep it a secret, keep it a fucking secret. Don't scope it. Oh, good point. Stop scoping your secrets, dude. All right, that place is... Now, here's my problem with that place. It's so fucking long. Too long. You need to watch... Mm -hmm. yeah. No, nope. <laughs> The length is way too much. You need girth a giant house. Oh, oh yeah. I, here's what I would do. i just buy a fucking Hamptons Inn and fucking... Uh, <laughs> got 250 bedrooms. Wow. 250 <laughs> private baths. Really well. <laughs> Huge lobby. <laughs> and then I have a breakfast buffet every day. <laughs> Is that a conference center you have? Well? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, that's a work area for me. I get in and I check on show prep in there. There's an ice machine on every floor. Every fucking floor. Actually, that would be worth it. I wish I had a fucking ice machine in every room. Just next to your bed. Just your clunking during the night. Ooh, I go like this. Mm, more ice. It's ready. <laughs> You ain't being in a hotel. You ever see anyone just digging in with their hands? Oh, yeah. There's a fucking scooper, dude. What are you doing? I'll just grab a handful. Also, I always just think it's silly because the quantity of ice I see people getting. Like, how much ice are I you normally using? It. I'm filling up the bathtub and throwing fucking three cases in there. <laughs> you ever do that? Like, you go on a fucking road with your buddies when you're younger, and the first thing, uh, you know, just there's ice and beer in there, and you're like, what about a shower later? You know, nope. I mean, it's great mm -hmm. that we have cold beer, <laughs> but we are at the beach. You know, I need to condition a lot this week. Maybe we should have got a cooler instead. <laughs> They're very inexpensive. Yeah, but I hate a foam cooler. Ooh, oh. like, don't even talk to me about a foam cooler. I'm going to. Please. I'm going Please to. Please stop talking to me about that foam cooler. Somebody made a lot of money off foam coolers, only like they're at parties and then you, you just hear people bitching. Don't you hate foam coolers? And he's like this. Not really. They're good. <laughs> I for yeah. one love foam coolers. They're cheap. They put them right next to the door when you're leaving. Oh, yeah, there's a fucking cooler right there. I had to buy it. Mm -hmm. They're terrible for the environment. They're great. Are they? Are they bad for the environment? I think, yeah, the styrofoam is bad for the environment. I thought it was good for the environment. I thought it was like having a marshmallow everywhere. I don't know. I'm just trying to get people to stop using styrofoam. <laughs> for your own personal <laughs> yes. reasons? I will eradicate styrofoam in 2016. I'm Gail Bennington telling you not to use styrofoam. Uh, it drives me crazy. The squeaks, the sh <laughs> shitty texture of it. The weakness. Please, if you want to buy a styrofoam cooler, 
kill yourself first. <laughs> Take a razor and slit your own throat with it. <laughs> All right, there's an active shooter in uh, San Diego uh, at the Naval Medical Center. Um, I don't know anything about it other than that. This is just breaking now, right? Or has this been going on? I think it's been going on a little bit, and our TVs just got turned on. We watch TV, so you won't have to. You're welcome, America. We know how much you hate TV. Yeah. But because there's an active shooting, we went on with Robin Williams' giant house. Uh, Woody Allen uh, is talking about his Amazon. I'm going to call it a TV show, but I don't know whether it is. They're not TV shows. Yeah, but because... We watch them on television, but you also watch it on your phone. I don't think it's a TV show. I don't think it qualifies. Okay, what do they call hold them? on. I can watch a Super Bowl on my phone. I just heard that the other day. And I'm like, why would I? It's so, what terrible fucking position are you in? <laughs> Where you got Wi Fi, right? To stream your, your HD Super Bowl, but then you're choosing to watch it on your phone. It's terrible. Maybe if you have to work during the Super Bowl, oh. it would be nice, I think. If you have to work during the Super Bowl, quit. <laughs> like, I can't fucking work here. Mm-mm. It's the Super Bowl today. Come out. I think a hospital should even be closed during the Super Bowl. There's no use for that. <laughs> what could you possibly need a hospital for? This is Cam's day. This is when Cam becomes the face of the NFL. Oh, and that old man Peyton is going to be carried out on an old rusty door with his parents and brother crying. Why did they do this to him? <laughs> 39-year-old Peyton Manning. I've watched Peyton Manning play for probably since he was 19 years old. I never heard anyone say, 24-year-old Peyton Manning <laughs> starting today. It's what if you, some reason they love saying 39-year-old Peyton Manning now. Everybody says it on every channel. 39-year-old Peyton Manning. <laughs> the grand old man of the game. <laughs> sure. <laughs> He just changed his number to 39 for the Super Bowl. And I don't know why they act like now he could be hurt any more than before. Take a good look at him now, folks. Soon he'll be coughing up blood from his own lungs. The Super Bowl. You know they're kind of hoping that he gets carried off the field. Oh. They, he's got to get carried off in either two ways. One, as the champion of the Super Bowl and the champion of the world. Or two... On a rusty door <laughs> carried by both of his brothers. Bleeding with out. his scoliosis brother not being able to do it and drop in. <laughs> Hopefully the head. Well, anytime he gets hit now, they just they just focus in on that and just look at his face. And then anyone online will just grab a chip. I don't it. know whether you were watching the end of the game or you were blackout drunk. But when they were driving the ball, and I'm talking about the Patriots, and it looked like, uh-oh, if they tie this up, Peyton's back on he was throwing the ball and wincing with his, you know, with, with just the guy on the sidelines, which, by the way, no one hangs out with Peyton on that team because he's like someone's dad for those guys. <laughs> he's 39. Yeah. <laughs> he's at his locker. Could you turn down that damn hippity hop music? <laughs> I don't want to listen to this. You're driving me batty. Happy Peyton's upset, guys. But it's weird. Here's the thing about Peyton Manning. You know, he's about as famous as you get in sports. I don't know what his wife looks like. I don't know if he has kids. I've never seen his house on TV. Mm -mm. He's just Peyton Manning, the football player. If he probably didn't have a helmet and pads on, he'd probably walk right past us. (laughs) We wouldn't even know it. All right, Zito's going out of his way to get pictures of all those things that I say I never saw before. Vito, not Zito. Nobody will even correct me around here. They're like, oh, God, Ron made a mistake. I'm going to be quiet about it. I didn't even hear you say it. By the way, I made a mistake with this yesterday when Chris said that he would go back in time just to see Soul Kitchen. I thought that was a cover song. It was not. Oh, really? I was thinking I was thinking of that Whiskey Bar song that they sing. Yeah. Well, That's Al- Alabama song. Yeah. Please show me the way to the next Whiskey Bar. That's, oh, don't ask me. That fucking song seemed like it came out of Cabaret. <laughs> it seems like somebody in a fucking diaper and stockings should be singing it. <laughs> for if we should go. What are you talking like that for? <laughs> No, it wasn't Peace Frog. Peace Frog, we all know. 
is a uh, is a lovely original song by them. No, you didn't pick Peace Frog, did you? That no, that was Joe. Joe picked, picked Peace Frog. Joe picked Peace Frog. I picked that. Yeah. Nice pick. He's our Peace Frog. Um, Matt, Matt, how are you? I want to remind everybody about a guy named John Elway, who a few years ago quarterbacked the Broncos as an underdog, beat the uh, Packers before he retired. Well, and well, hold on, uh, you're a lot older than me. I don't remember this John Elway you speak of, <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm hoping he has an Elway finish. I really am, Matt, and I'm saying that as a man. Who never rooted for Peyton Manning once in his entire life? Never been a big love Eli for some reason. I just th- yeah. I think Eli is adorable. He is kind of cute, right? Yeah. And he's got other brother vibe. Where you're like, oh, yeah. your other brother. Peyton is a uh, a classic overachiever, and there are certain either teams or players that is fun to root against because they're so good. Peyton Manning has always been so good. That I've enjoyed any time that he failed. We're like, oh, this is great. <laughs> the overachiever failed. Love rooting against the Yankees. Love rooting against the Dallas Cowboys. Um, it's a fun thing to do. I'm probably two years away from rooting against the Golden State Warriors. Because that'll become fun. But it looks like, uh, you know, it might be Cam Newton that I enjoy rooting against. Because he's had a hell of a year. Uh, he's won just about everything there is to win in a full career. You know, he's... Well, here's what happened with him. He won the junior college national championship. Who even knew there was such a thing? Because he, he either got kicked out of or he quit the Gators and went to a junior college, won the national uh, title. Then with that, then went... And won with Auburn, won the national title. He won the Heisman. He won the Rookie of the Year. He's going to win the MVP this year. Um, by the way, there's only been, let me try to guess here. I think two people who have ever won as a quarterback the national title, uh, the college title, and the Super Bowl, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Who was that? Let's see if our boys can guess. Okay. Vito's looking it up, so. Let me think. Yeah, you, oh, you're just coming out of that. Terry Bradshaw? No. Where did Terry Bradshaw win a fucking collegiate title at? Wasn't sure I was making a guess. Okay, so you're just yelling out names of people you know that won a Super Bowl. Let's go over to a kid who studied the game, Joey Jojo. We want to say Joe Montana. Is correct? Yes. That's one. You have one more. Joe Namath. Bam! Oh, oh, no! oh. Get it! Get it today and tomorrow! <laughs> Wait, did you look it up on your phone? No, I actually happened to know it before when you brought it up. Then why would he take it all the time? <laughs> Scumbag. I wanted to build up the it, suspense. It yeah. It fucking worked. <laughs> I, I bought it. I was actually thinking to myself, should I give him another Joe hint or let him go on his own? <laughs> Please show me the way. Do the next whiskey bar. Janice wants to talk to us. Hello, Janice. Hello, Bennington. Sweet nice Janice. Uh, you guys were talking about giant houses. Yeah, we and, were. <laughs> and I uh, I moved from a Chicago bun- bungalow into a one-bedroom apartment, and I couldn't be happier. Yeah. <laughs> it's you like the downsize. To take care of. And, uh, in fact, I'm still going through boxes, going, oh, Jesus. <laughs> throw them out. Don't even go through them. Just throw out boxes as Don't quick as they come in. All, it's all just stuff, you know. Right now, I just throw my Christmas presents directly into the trash. <laughs> By the way, I got something new that I love. I had the old version. Never loved it, so never went back to it. But I have a Kindle now. Love it. You love it? Love a Kindle. Really? Yeah. I'm Instead surprised. Of Don't be. I'm shocked, though. <laughs> Learn to live with it, honey. I never. <laughs> no, I, I hate the first version of Kindle that yeah. everybody r- rushed to give me. Uh, but this version that we're on now, and someone said, I'm going to give you a Kindle. I'm like, I don't want a Kindle. <laughs> I tried it. It's awful. <laughs> and uh, I'm just a book reading full. Wow. It's great. And it's okay to read without 
the texture of a book and it's the smell so of a book. It's so much better. <laughs> really? Ugh, I hate books. <laughs> <laughs> I despise them. I, I now say, burn all the books you <laughs> want. <laughs> no! Because I have a Kindle. No! <laughs> I'm a book what burner. That's want? me. <laughs> yeah. Fahrenheit 451, I've cha- switched over, and I'm going with the bad guys or Empire, as they were known. <laughs> Look, Mommy, there's going to be a fire. Uh, mm. Vito, I'm going to ask you a question. You uh, you claim to be a big editor, right? Are you one of those people who know how to uh, put in something into a movie that isn't there? Let's say if, if there was a gun, do you know how to put a fish in there where the gun is like one of those people can do? I don't, I maybe not like, probably not fantastic. It'll probably look like the guy's holding like a really fish, a fish out of place. Yes, he would be holding <laughs> a fish out of place. Should be a gun. But you know, I, I don't want to give away the actual thing. But I saw something in a cowboy movie that I'm like, oh, if this one change was made, it would be hilarious. I could, I could try. I don't think you can do it. Oh, man. You know what? I better take you off that computer. Oh, Joe? <laughs> Yeah. He, he can't. can't even turn guns into fish. Come on. I know. <laughs> and Jesus could. Thank you, Janice. I'll talk to you later, honey. Bye, Janice. <laughs> I love you. Bye. Bye bye. She's the best. Isn't I she? love that, Janice. God damn it, I love Janice. Oh, what's not to love? What do you hate right now, though? Mm, I don't want to say. Yeah. He's right what, there. What? Because you're wearing a, a Make a Great American, <laughs> and you're you're trolling us. You make yeah, Make America Great Again camo yeah. hat. Yeah. Who gave it, it to you? Uh, that's Brad Stinks on Twitter. Brad Stinks. Brad, it's from Brad Stinks and Alex the Intern. One thing's for show. Brad Stink. Brad Stinks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, those Make are the guys sure. that you got mad. You said they stole your bit, and yeah. now you're now wearing you're their besties. hats. Well, they've they've you know they've made amends. <laughs> And Gail, somebody sent you a bunch of beautiful vinyl the other day. Yes, I, it was the greatest gift. Nick from Utah sent a huge box of vinyl. He uh, went through his attic and his That's his, nice. his wife's ex husband had Uh-oh. left some stuff, and she said, "Get rid of it. I don't want to. I don't want to see anything have to do with that man." That's and really he sent great, it right though, to me that you hate someone so much that now you hate their bands. <laughs> All of those bands suck. Yeah. But yeah, it was the most wonderful gift. What a great surprise. You know, you know, let me just say this. As a person who's bought you a lot of <laughs> gifts, that's a little hurtful. No, to it me. was the most wonderful one. <laughs> I'm going to adopt one of those like starving little babies from overseas because they'll love the shit out of you. Oh, yeah. Just give them a goddamn cheeseburger. They'll, yeah, they'll cry when you leave the room. That's what I want. <laughs> I want a kid that loves me so much she, she just screams. I have <laughs> Vito just laughing at the corner. Is that what you normally are doing in you know, there, but we don't know? Because he, he can't find anyone who's grown up more impoverished than him. So when he hears about one, it's just, <laughs> it's just fantastic to him. At least I had a hall to sleep in. <laughs> Vito, you slept in a hall? Yeah, I slept in, uh, I had to bring out a pillow and just uh, watch my mom walk by, get, get some water. <laughs> Now, I was laying there. What did you have? Like a no, actually. So my my apartment was a studio that uh, my dad put a little wall up in. Nice. So my room is Andy. about like three feet bigger than me. Fucking <laughs> 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 Harry so Potter. So a coffin is what you're saying. He yeah. built you a coffin. Yeah, like that's that's my room. It gets real hot. Sure like, real does. hot. <laughs> I got a nice little twin bed. <laughs> My feet hit my TV at night sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you can uh, bring a girl over and jerk off and hit her in the hallway. Yeah, I just got to ask my roommate to keep it down. Oh, boy. That's bad. Your mom? Time mom. <laughs> yeah. My roommate, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shh, my roommate's sleeping. <laughs> um, Scott in Florida. Scott. Hey, Ronnie, I just wanted to uh, piggyback on the Cam Newton. Good, discussion. come on board. I'd love to have you. <laughs> um, so if Cam Newton and the Panthers win the Super Bowl, Cam would be the first person to win the Heisman, the National Championship, the MVP, which he'll presumably win, and a Super Bowl. You mean in one year? <laughs> in, <laughs> Joe Montana in never won the MVP? Uh, no, he never, oh, he never, won, he never the won the Heisman. Yeah, yeah. He, ne- he never had much of an arm. People don't know that about Joe Montana. 
But it was all about that noggin of his. Really? Yeah. Noggin and balance. You know what? To me, I would have. I've always said that he's the greatest quarterback of all time. But he's doing an embarrassing commercial now. Oh no! Uh, where he's wearing khaki pants filled with quarters uh, <laughs> in front of me. the fucking stupid um, guy who sells bad pizza. I Papa, forget Papa John. I guess it's Papa, Papa John or fucking the Noid. I don't know who they are. <laughs> They're all fucking terrible. You said you were going to avoid the Noid. <laughs> I tried. I can't. If I'm watching a game, the Noid shows up. So yeah, it's Papa John is doing some kind of shitty. For 50 cents, get eight more pizzas. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he just comes out with his pockets full of stupid quarters. I'm just like, I never liked that dude. <laughs> Man, how much do you think he got for this? I'm going to say $7 million. I'd have fucking started a kick, started to give it to him now. And by the way, there's no way someone's getting $7 million for a, <laughs> for a, a fucking lot. commercial. I mean, it's That'd be a lot for a movie these days. <laughs> Hey, man, Tony looked like a, almost like a homeless guy eating that pizza. He seemed like desperate for the pizza. I know. <laughs> I, don't, don't please don't. Uh, this fucking guy, I loved him. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> I loved him. God like, damn it, I loved you. It, it's like seeing a fucking ex girlfriend sucking cock for fucking crack rocks. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I think we could have kickstarted that shit and got him the money he needed. Well, at least it's not Joe Montana. That really would have killed me. <laughs> oh, no. You know, right now, Joey Jojo, or the man we call Peace Frog, is sitting high <laughs> on top of everything. He's writing great songs. He's answering questions. He's the MVP. You're He's doing our, well. Yeah. I'm the Cam Newton of this year. Ugh. And by Cam Newton, I mean, I guess a different quarterback. <laughs> no, you don't have to be afraid of me. I'm just someone. Who, <laughs> I'm just someone who can stop your career at this point. Oh no! Yeah, you got. You probably have a year and a half, two years of being able to get past me. Okay. But as of right now, I can stop it and then still call people. Hey, I had this kid work for me. Make sure you don't make the same mistake I did. Because a real <laughs> jerk call. He loves Newton. Yeah, Cam Newton. So <laughs> make sure make sure that asshole never works again. Do you love Cam Newton? I am a Cam fan. I just hated that whole team this whole fucking year with the picture taking and mocking and just, keep what pounding. Are, That's what, their is, thing. what is their dumb dance? The dab. The dab. Yeah, they're cocky little bunch. Is it be like a weed thing? What's their dab? Dab is like you know, it's like a pose to show just how confident you are. <laughs> yeah, and but how, dabs means weed. It's like that fucking glass of yeah. mustard stuff. Then there's the pose, and you can pose. The pogs. Good. Oh, okay. Mm. That I can get into. <laughs> uh, John, in Arizona. Hey there, Benny Goods. Hey. hey uh, I just wanted to let you know that it costs Papa John's about $2 and about 28 cents to make an extra large, fully loaded pizza. How could that, that guy's be? making a killing off us. How the fu- What are they putting in that thing <sighs> that it's... you? Uh, I can't get a slice in New York for two twenty eight. <laughs> yeah. But if someone said this whole pizza costs you two twenty eight, I'd be like, "What is in it?" I want to know about the cheese. That would you could be the, sued for using the word cheese. <laughs> the quality of cheese oh, that would be. It's only the <laughs> finest. It's only the finest dollar pizza for the, the whole thing. There's got to be seventeen cents worth of cheese on that. Ugh. Well, you know, they do have their own Olive Garden, they so they say in Italy that, you know, they get olives brought in from Italy just for the pizzas. Sounds like they're lying. If it's only two twenty eight a pizza. All right. What are you going to do? Right, do? Steve, Tampa. Ronnie B., what's up? Hey, I want to give you a little insight, man. Cam Newton, he left uh, the University of Florida because he got caught stealing some laptops. Why didn't they just give him laptops? I don't fucking know. This fucking dude, there? what is it about Florida and that state that people are stealing laptops, crab legs? <laughs> is it the heat? We got to pay for them oxies, baby. Yeah. Now, uh, Tampa Bay's lovely quarterback, Chris, you call them the future. Yeah, James Winston. Yes, James Winston. The His college had to pay the girl that he allegedly raped, but never you know, went to trial. Nine hundred fifty thousand dollars. 
Mm-hmm. And you know I what they said? Did. It's a bargain for what <laughs> the money that that rapist brought to our school. <laughs> Hey, Ron, did you see that girl only got 250000 Her lawyer got 700000 No, I didn't see what? that story at all. Oh, my God. Yeah, look, 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 at, the, look at the payout. The girl, she the got girl raped got twice. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. And her lawyer got 700000 of that, and she got two fifty. dollars uh, You know what? I'm going to send you into the pretty good prize closet because you had more on that story than my entire prep team. All right, Steve, hey, enjoy. Hey, Ron, I, I got a question real quick. Yeah. Hey, with uh, Joe's songs yesterday, what happened to the Joe List song? I didn't hear that one. Oh, shit! That was shit. from a pre-Bennington world. Did it count? It well, should have counted. It is pre-Bennington world. Wait, when did you make that? Um, Maybe two years ago? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, how long have you been with us? He hasn't been with us two years. No. But I was still doing stuff on the side. You? you? I was going, yeah. I never saw you again once you started I was hanging work- around with those Catholics. I was working a day job, too, during that time. Oh, well, I'm going to make sure know. your career is destroyed. No! <laughs> you should add Joe List on the list, though, because that's all part of it. Uh, all right, pretty good prize closet. <laughs> it's the pretty good prize. It's the remix. It's the pretty good prize, prize closet. We have pretty good prizes. It's the pretty good prize. It's the pretty good prize. Prize closet. Is that little head? We have good prizes. <laughs> he wins the signed DVD, Silent House, signed by Elizabeth Olsen. It's a horror movie. I'm gonna give him a second prize, though. Okay. <laughs> Steve, you're going to get two prizes because the first one I never even heard of. Now, there's Cam dancing away. You can see why he annoys me. But if he wins this game and he's the champion, you know, now you're fucking Ric Flair. You're the dirtiest player in the game. Everybody's got to take it. <laughs> it's true. You know what? You go home, fucking light up some dabs, enjoy your stolen <laughs> fucking laptops. <laughs> it still has. It has the fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. Everything you went through for them. They're precious. <laughs> you got to fucking, you know. I'm still going to root against them, though. I'm still going to root for uh, Broncos. Yeah? Broncos. Hmm. Even though I'm probably going to be looking at the same thing that happened to them against Seattle. The yeah. massive destruction. A crush. What are we going to do as our... Uh, Chicken parm? Put chicken parm I think chick- fucking chicken parm crisp. sliders. <laughs> chicken parm, man. Why are we sliding? Why can't we have just a nice big bowl? Well, this... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if you do chicken parm sliders, then like you can have some other stuff. Because that's... You need a spread. Oh, I don't. I need a giant chicken parm. <laughs> yeah. No sandwich is better smaller. Yeah, but if you have lots of other things you want to get involved with... You know, I have one or two little sliders. Yeah, I have two big giant sliders. <laughs> like so big that you could be arrested for calling them a slider. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, another poll out. Oh, it looks like Trump's doing pretty good. Oh, my Jeez. God. Is that real? Uh, Cruz just say Trump might be unstoppable. Uh, there's 68% of the Republicans think he's most likely to win. And here's why that gets dangerous if you're running against a person. There's a certain amount of people out there who will vote for the front runner. It's not like they care about issues. They want to vote for the guy they think is winning. That is so strange. I can't imagine what personality type that would be. What would be your personality? Someone who wants to win, I guess. I, I will tell you this. I've never personally met someone who said, I want to vote for the person who wins. And yet the polls show, and it's why somebody gets momentum, that people are going like this. Hey, everybody else thinks this Trump is good, so hey, I'm going to do it too. I understand more the personality of somebody who is just going to naysay whoever's in the front more than I understand somebody being like, I want to pick the winner. If you're just a contrarian who's like, yeah. I don't like what everyone else likes, that I get a little bit more than yeah. just the idea of saying, I want to be on the same team as most people. That's weird. That's a very bizarre personality. 
I just want to win at any cost to this country. <laughs> please pick Sarah Palin as your running mate. And please run against Bernie Sanders uh, and Mike Bloomberg. Make this a New York three-way election. Two billionaires and uh, one old Jew calling for a rent strike. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want this election to turn into. NYC three-way dance? Yeah. Three-way dance, baby. <laughs> Let's make it a four quarters match. If you want to, you got to <laughs> take that person and put his head on four different corners. <laughs> it's a pretty good prize. It's, it's a pretty, pretty good, good prize. prize. And we haven't talked to our old pal Chuck in North Carolina in a long time. I'm sure he's part of Pam Panther's fever. Chuck, how are you? I'm doing good, Ronnie. How are you? I'm great, pal. Listen, I was at the Panthers. I've been going to just about all their home games, and I was there Sunday night. And the rumor has it that they're going to stop, try to stop the Panthers from giving those balls to the kids after they score or whatever. Because, goddamn, when they score, them kids come down out of them aisles. Yeah, it, they're yeah. Knock, it, they're it, knocking it, people down. Kids <laughs> getting bloody noses from falling. See, here's what happened. So, Cam had such did so many stupid dances for a one fucking inch touchdown run that he would score, right? <laughs> that they came up with the idea and they gave it to him. When you're done doing your dab and your and your shuck uh, dance, give a ball to a kid, people will like you. So he started to go over and you would see him hand a ball to a kid and the kid would be amazed and his parents and uh, it was great. But now it's just a matter of he's handing out balls to little rich kids, you know, who all are fucking have tickets on the wall. <laughs> and now kids who don't get the ball are crying. And when they see the kid who gets the ball, Aww. Like, oh, I didn't want it. I didn't want to give it to me because he'll push some kids out of the way <laughs> to hand it to another kid. But Chuck, I guess North Carolina is just going insane right now. Well, they they also had a problem. People complaining when they first started doing that. He was giving it to the black kids. Yeah. And then they fussed about that, so he started giving it to the white kids. But I had an old football coach in high school, and he used to get on us. If people celebrated and done crazy shit, he always said, "Act like you've been there before. Have yeah. a little class." He stole that line. But well, yeah, I mean, that's what he said. you basically, and I agree a hundred percent. I wish there was some kind of a brushback pitch in a pro football. Like you don't see people doing that in, in baseball because the next pitch is going to hit you in the neck, or just a guy on your team is going to take one in the neck for that. Well, do you think? Do you think if you had to bet, would you bet that the Panthers could play that good again? Back to well, back? it's it's really true. Actually, even when this was happening the other day, I'm like, you better want, you might want to save some of these, you know, points. I, 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 they couldn't have played much better except for that one interception he threw. I don't see how they can play any better. And you know, you saw what happened against Atlanta. It's not like that team when things don't go their way. Cam doesn't have a reputation for folding. Uh, okay. It's going to be a better Super Bowl than hopefully than any of us think. It's going I to think it's, if they're going to beat the Panthers, isn't it, I just hope it's a good game. Yeah. But if, if I think if they beat the Panthers, they're going to have to pressure him because if he stands back there like the Statue of Liberty, yeah, like he did Sunday, he'll throw that somebody all day long, and he can throw, man. He don't even have to rear back; he can toss it forty damn yards. Well, the the he, yeah, he has an amazing skill set. He's uh, he's literally at the point. You're looking at man. Literally in his prime right now. The next four years could set this up that, you know, but the weird thing about football is they take your coaches, they take your teammates, and, you know, they just got these teams before they could go on and become, like, a, a great franchise. Thanks, Chuck. That's the weird thing about where we are in football now. If this was, like, the... 80s or 90s, we're like, well, the Panthers are setting them up themselves up for the next five, six years. But I don't know if that's true anymore. The salary cap just destroys everything. He's, like this, the Seahawks lost, you know, a bunch of dudes after that first Super Bowl and even more after that. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's uh, this chance because they don't want anybody to go out and be the Steelers in the 70s. 
They want every year at the end of the year for every fucking team to feel like they can win. Is it, Stupid. is it better for the NFL to have that? Well, you know, you got 32 fucking billionaires and none of them want to be in the, in the hole with their team. They're just like, I want the chance to win. Like I win everything else in life. And I'm like, well, if that's true, go buy Robin Williams house. And then maybe I'll talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Vito. <Fido. laughs> no, don't you hide your mouth. You, you laugh happily over there. <laughs> it's a pretty good press. It's a pretty, pretty good, good press. press. I didn't know. I never heard the thing of stop giving it to so many black kids. You're making people <laughs> mad. I don't know why we have to divide everything up. I wouldn't care if you gave it to a black kid. Why, why would it's you? It's a kid. Why would you I wish care? that would be called the black kid's ball <laughs> every time that you hand it one over. <laughs> See, this, all right, first of all, no one can annoy me more than these people acting like the black people don't get enough Oscars because really, to get even any kind of award, it's somewhat ridiculous, yeah. you know? To say I should have won the award is even worse, but, now, it's not just black Oscars matter. Uh, now they say gay people haven't gotten enough awards. I don't know who said it. Ian McKellen. Gandalf. Nope. All right, Gandalf. He says to everybody, gays have not achieved the Oscar enough. Look, as far as I can is concerned, Every time I see a guy get an Oscar, that is a gay guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's Come on, already Sarine. done. <laughs> so Can't you evident. see you're all gay? <laughs> None of our gays have gotten Oscars. Uh, uh, Tom Cruise has never picked up an Oscar. Um, I, I don't get what. First of all, I've seen some people who get Oscars who don't deserve that are black. Yeah, that I mean, I'm that's. Gonna, I'm going to make this fucking statement. Twelve Years a Slave is not a good movie. Steve McQueen, I don't even think he's a good director, but he's directed better than that movie. Yeah, I mean, what about um, didn't the Help pick up Oscars and stuff like that? Yeah. That was not a good movie. Come on, I always called it the Help, <laughs> Help. <laughs> that was my nice. You get, uh, honey, you want to go see Help? Oh, sounds good. <laughs> I like that movie because it's so sometimes you can hand someone a shit sandwich. <laughs> Fucking horrific. <laughs> that was, I'm not going to be on the, the team of the shit sandwich. That was supposed to be the applause. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Woo! You got him! And then she said when she got her Oscar, it's true. I would make someone eat a shit sandwich. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Do it! these people at the Oscars? Army man types. <laughs> Somehow I got into this. Th I'm a seat filler! This was funny. He couldn't do that voice yesterday. He was so hungover. Can make you sick. Matt, he's kind of the Matthew Perry of our show. This story's up on the iBank. Matthew Perry says that he can't remember three years of the Freds because he was so fucking whacked out on downs. Um... First of all, I wish I could have, uh, forget at least three years of Friends. <laughs> at least. Chandler, you're lucky. Chandler Bing. Stanley, could you be any more Chandler? <laughs> oh, Come shit. on. <laughs> oh, shit. I remember things. You're the David Swimmer, though, then. You get to be Chandler or David Swimmer. It's up to you. Oh, my God. Cast hey, friends with everyone from the Bennington show. <laughs> Uh, I would be, um, the dude who walked out after the first season. <laughs> Wait, who's that? I don't know. I think it was one of the boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> I would be the You're one. You're like who... Ross's lesbian wife, ex-wife. That's me. <laughs> I'm Ross's lesbian, lesbian wife. But I'd rather be the chick who dated Ross's lesbian wife. I always thought that she oh, was yeah, really Oh, yeah, I love hot. her. Yeah. Yeah, she is attractive. I don't know what her whole deal is, but I like to get What's the bottom. What's the deal with uh, Ross's yeah. ex What's the deal with her? lesbian lover? I was lover. listening to your show yesterday. What's the deal with this Esther Go? People are literally writing that to me. Well, we actually... I'm going to say have... who one of them is. It's Flathead. <laughs> Flat. <laughs> so then I wrote back to him, Mikey Penzi knows her. Because that's a friend of ours from down in Florida. And for some reason, when Esther wants to get on the show... She goes through everybody else but Chris. I hear from uh, Video Mike, 
Uh, here from Mikey Panzeka, who uh, is a Miami comic. And I said to Chris, I go, Esther Koo wants to do the show. And he's like, oh. What? You Dude, I'm so <laughs> fucking hungover. Well, maybe now Esther Koo can DM me now that we're Twitter friends. Oh. What? Oh. What does that mean? Wait, <laughs> I just learned this term. Isn't it double mouth? <laughs> <laughs> it's double mouth. <laughs> So if you want to double mouth me later for a booking, just let me know. Well, what she got into that groove of staring into someone's asshole. Yeah, I can you see a shiny light. <laughs> <laughs> what? You the know, pinkness the, of their insides glow. That deep pink color. <laughs> Stuart Smith is, the thing is, the NFL actually has the worst parody of the big four. Interesting. He's sent a, an article along with that. That shocks me. Especially since I don't have a team of the decade lined up yet. Mm -hmm. And I won't get one this year. Mm -mm. And we're at, let me remind everybody, 16. Yeah, we got three years left and it's over. So who was the team of the aughts then? We went through the other ones. The team of the aughts? The New England Patriots. Oh, okay. yeah, Patriots. Patriots. They would have really been the team of the odds with their fourth win being undefeated, but the New York football giants <laughs> had their shit all over my excitement. <laughs> Too bad, Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah, I saw you in a scope bragging about going to the parade for that. Chris. I know you probably don't remember, but I'm staring at my phone going like this. Now he's bragging about going to a parade. This is not him. This is not the Chris I know. Um, oh, God, Doc Intoxicated just said something bad about Chris. No. <laughs> Millie no. also said, Esther can't approach Chris about being on the show. He doesn't answer his emails. What we need to do is probably have a producer email where all the producers can access it together. And that's when Chris is dropping stuff through the cracks on a constant basis. Yeah. We can fish can them out it. of the crack. Let's talk that over in front of Don today. Let's lay out all the Chris problems in front of Don. Oh, God. Okay. Where do I begin? <laughs> but actually, a producer email is a good idea. What, where are your emails sent? Your personal? Personal. Dumb fuck. What? That's what got Hillary in such trouble. Yeah. That's why she can't become president. <laughs> I'm in deep shit. Even though her husband already did it. Look, I already know the job. My husband did it before. <laughs> So it's easy. She's got I a live point. there. She's got a point, guys. The kid's got a point there. She's got a point there. That's pretty. That's better than mine. Damn it! <laughs> I came up with it, then you did better. <laughs> Between that and that one used vinyl thing blowing away all my presents. <laughs> but I got press. I, now they're saying no sighting or a confirmation of an active shooter. Sounds like there isn't one. There so was there or wasn't the, the there? The only report was someone heard three shots in the basement, which could have just... That's what it takes to go oh viral? My yeah. I heard something down the hall then. Let's go viral. They heard a bad water heater. That's what happened. So there was never any shots fired, they're saying? We don't know. It's just madness out there in Sand Dog. They're fucking losing their <laughs> team anyway, so what do they care? Raiders might go there. Why would they? <laughs> I read some... They're not going to get the new stadium if they go there. <laughs> There's all these fucking crazy reports. They're staying in Oakland, getting a new stadium. They're going to San Antonio. And then the newest one is if they'll jump on the chance to go to San Diego. I I remember years ago when they moved, they were talking about moving to New York and making a third fucking team <laughs> New in New York. Raiders. Yeah, it would be great. It doesn't <laughs> matter where any of these teams are at. Like uh, the Vikings, Joey JoJo's team. He watches just as many games now as he did as if he lived in Minnesota. <laughs> Fucking teams are there. Um, who's uh, with you today? Who's our interns? We have Kashmir with us today. Send Cash in, would you? Send in the cash, please. How come we don't have a send in the cash? Well, he already has his theme song. Don't bother. He's here. <laughs> Wow, Cash is really done up today. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> you know what? In that, you look European in that sweater Ooh. today. Bonjour. 
<laughs> now, the top of that, is that deconstruction? Is that what that's it's called? A, yeah, it's a, little, it's a little hoop. It's a hoop swoop. See, I don't understand all that. <laughs> I'm glad that you're here, though, Cash, because outside today we were discussing the the style and clothing of black dudes because we saw a guy walking down the street and he just had a giant leather jacket that said fly on it. Now, <laughs> you know, a giant leather jacket with something, you know, stitched into it like that is expensive. But why do it in a, in a term that's going to get old so fast? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's already old. Oh, yeah, just to old. Say, yeah. That's why we started laughing. Yeah. But then we were like, we brought up some of the other leather jackets. Chris, you brought up. All right, like 12 years ago, at mm-hmm. least in New York. You, there was like this resurgence of Scarface jackets and Scarface like clothing. And in every leather store around the city, there was just Scarface jackets. And they were exactly exact, like in black, red, and white with like pictures of Tony Montana <laughs> in leather. Now, did Al Pacino get money for that? No, this isn't like he official. Had to. He didn't. This, this isn't like you official can't gear. go around using the name of a movie and the actor <laughs> and not pay them. It's impossible. <laughs> No. So, like, if I just start my own New York Giants line of clothing, <laughs> I'd be shut down. I can't start my own. Hey, get your Star Wars toys here, everybody. They're cheaper. Wow, there's a lot of Tony Montana. They stuff were there. everywhere. Everyone was, every dude was wearing them. It was hysterical. Now, if you were out, Pacino, would you feel like, hey, I think everyone missed the point of my movie? You know, at some point, you know, you think they thought it's a crime doesn't pay. He only had a couple years. Who expected everyone to go, I'd rather have two years of stuff and then die than a lifetime of God's nature? I'm Scarface. (laughs) Everyone pretty much just took the world is yours from that movie. I'm I'm going to ask you something else about black people. The monochromatic thing that they do, and this has gone on now for over 20 years, where they just want to wear a red hat and red shoes. Yeah. What is that about? I don't know if it's part of uh, them repping their uh, crew or something like that. I don't think that there could be that many yeah. crews. I could see in certain but, places of Los Angeles the blue and red would right. make sense. I've just never understood why you have to have like a bright like sneaker that's like it's like five feet bigger than your shoe- foot. Like I know they have. Like I know like a lot of people have big feet, but like it, it's like clown shoes. Well, here's the biggest thing is that you're gonna not only just have the same color hat and shoes, but they will be like. I got my orange hat, my yeah. orange jacket, my orange pants, and my orange shirt. Like, all the way down. Johnny, and the orange boxers oh, yeah. go down, yeah. <laughs> Everything has to be the same goddamn color. No. We're, we're wearing team hats that, you know, you don't care to give a shit about. But That's just... the amazing thing to me, that they wear stuff that they... Like, they got old Expos hats that yeah. they're wearing. Now, the Scarface jackets, yes, I agree, we're bad. But I don't think there was anything worse... When they were doing the, like, Tweety Bird jacket. I don't even know that. Do you remember? It was like, everybody was just, like, wearing, like, Bugs Bunny jacket and, like, Tweety Bird jacket. I I had a babysitter who was, like... African American black, and she came in. She every day with like a Tweety Bird and the Martian, like the Martian, the Martian guy. Was big yeah, the Martian Martian. pajama pants, a Tweety Bird leather jacket, and then like the back of her car was full of like a Bugs Bunny like tire. Well, first of all, I I'm glad anybody would pick Warner Brothers over Disney. Yeah. I'm for that, hundred <laughs> percent. But this is uh, this actually went right by me. I had no idea <laughs> that this was big. I might just start wearing it. <laughs> I mean, they were all very oversized. They look very comfortable. So in in that term, right, because I know you follow fashion, but there is a separation of black fashion and white fashion. Definitely. Yeah. It's just and there's never like there's sometimes a cross like with like texture, like there could be, oh, everyone's wearing the leather now, but completely different ways. Well, remember when everybody took uh, like when black rappers start wearing the preppy clothes so much, right, yeah, yeah. like a pink polo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Polo they jumped into, and then somebody else, Tommy uh, Hilfiger. Yeah, Tommy yeah. Hilfiger got worn big so, so yeah. much to the fact that it started to be thought of as gang clothing. Yeah. And you're like, it's Tommy Hilfiger. Yeah. <laughs> nope. It's for the urban kids. <laughs> as white as any style could ever is that, be. Is that driven by rappers or sports stars? Hmm, I would think rappers. I was gonna say yeah, because then like a rapper will like mention like a Tommy Hilfiger in a song, and then all the sports stars will listen to the song and start doing it. And kind of goes from there. This this was uh, sent to me. 
These are the hottest things to wear right now. Casper, Friendly Ghost, Richie Rich, <laughs> and this is my personal favorite, the Monopoly Man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all because of this guy named Alec Monopoly. I think he's an artist. Uh, look how much faster we get things done. With wow. I mean, I'm not Sweet. saying anything about this. Yeah. But oh. all right, it looks like he's he's like cool. a pop artist. Yeah. yeah. He's doing an Andy Warhol thing. And now, does he appeal to hip hop kids or? White kids that want to be hip hop kids. First of all, I do like <laughs> my answer changed when I saw that. <laughs> oh, but don't God. you think his art from a pop artist point of view is kind yeah. of cool? It's so cool. Yeah. It is cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, now does he always cover his face? Yeah. He, he also does yeah, he a Banksy anybody. thing yeah. as he, well. Uh, yes, he's ripping off everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there he is. There, yippee kaye, motherfucker. Um, Pretty nice bandana. I think this applies to both white and black kids. It's, well, it's, it's like the street art thing. Yeah, but it's it's white kids falling into black kids thing, which is always style to a certain extent. Well, it definitely looks like that kind of, you know, like that Scrooge street. Mc, all right. So it's not Donald Duck. It's Scrooge McDuck. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, that actually is pretty cool. Is, yeah. <laughs> Smelling money. Um, but yeah, it looks like that kind of streetwear trend where everyone was doing like the, you know, like the rap guys are wearing those like all over prints, you know, yeah, it's like yeah. t-shirts with the all over prints. Just, yeah. Like a lot of like strong colors everywhere. And those are, yeah. Really cool. I would say this, it's the bomb. <laughs> you got it. That's yeah. It. You know what I'm that's saying? The bomb. I have a leather jacket with that saying. It's so that's weird. so oh. cool. <laughs> it's so right, that's what cool. I think. Yeah. <laughs> So, again, this is a pro-capitalism thing rather than Banksy does the anti-capitalism. Where is it? Is it tongue-in-cheek? No, it isn't. It's oh. tongue up the ass of capitalism. <laughs> um, Patrick. Patrick. Hey, guys. A great show. A, few years, ago, a few years ago, my, I'm, I'm in my 40s. My mom bought a multicolored leather jacket for me for Christmas that had the magic eight ball on the back. <laughs> That's if fucking you remember, cool. If you remember the one Putty wore on Sunday. Remember it. I built my life on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was very classy. All right, so when you wore it places, did everyone really like you more? Well, it, were happening? It, when I wore it around my friends, they would just stare like I had lost my mind. But uh, I, for, the, for Christmas, when she got it, we did go out to eat, and it was just slightly better than wearing a members-only jacket. So. <laughs> Um, Looks pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Junkbox Jim writes this. Maybe what's that a boot could branch into some commentary about the other shoe cultural phenomena. Of course, you know when I see people, and this has been going on for decades too, sleeping out to get sneakers as if they were Led Zeppelin tickets, <laughs> um, and knowing that making that when the sneaker companies make less rather than more, you know, that they, that they cause this kind of hysteria. It's a weird sneakerhead culture where there's like, a, there's an eBay specifically for sneakers. It's like a whole, it's a whole culture. It's really nice. Do nuts. they wear the sneakers or they just collect them? Um, they'll wear some, they'll buy two pairs. So they have one to wear and one to trade, but there's like whole expos where like some guys go to like, they, the van full of sneakers. Like, I'm going to trade now, sneakers Now, is this all, all because of Michael Jordan? Uh, the Air Jordan was yeah. pretty much did, what did it. None of that happened before Michael Jordan, no. right? No, the Jordans are what did it. And there's, like, Jordans that were tens of thousands of dollars. And Jordans is still the best-selling yeah. sneaker in the world. Michael Jordan still makes more money than any athlete today off of the uh, because of his shoe deal. Has mm. anyone else even come close to having a shoe deal or a clothing line deal that even compares like who would you say is number two to jordan well uh what's his name just signed a uh lebron signed a lifetime contract i think something like he'll make 30 million dollars a year for the rest of his life which probably <laughs> really takes a lot of pressure off his <laughs> retirement <laughs> planning and then you can like a get breath, into... yeah. you know even if things go bad we still have that 30 million a year <laughs> you know? so let's not forget it's a nest that egg. It's a nest yeah egg. <laughs> Um, and then you can pick up like maybe a hobby or two. Yeah. You don't have to go as hard. But you have that socks, yeah. Thirty mil, 
to lean on. I like to see Bernie Sanders trying to just start to wear this <laughs> stuff, trying to read the, the reach the youth vote. <laughs> I got these Jordans by uh, sleeping out <laughs> in Brooklyn. Now, what about Kanye's? I was going to say, yeah, he's probably he's his. He's trying to make Sneakers. himself that, yeah. Do they, I don't know how they do with the kids. Um, they're popular. Those things are terrible, by the way. <laughs> that, I, I'm that looking at like, right there. That looks like it's, it's unfinished. Yeah. The, these red ones right here, Yeah. those ones are apparently are like the real, they're the, the Air Yeezys yeah. are what they call them. They go, they're very expensive. And it's just a ugly red shoe. Not if this stuff looks nice, yeah. It's fucking monochromatic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I agree. I mean, you'll find a better looking sneaker than that, but that's not the point of this, obviously. But those like the rare ones, they didn't make a lot of them. But you know who gets giant shoe deals, and it just doesn't matter in this country, is the soccer players. They, they, they basically sign with a shoe company that pays them to play soccer. Right. It's just gigantic, <laughs> crazy money because they reach billions of people, not millions. And, uh, you know, they're reaching people. A lot of their fans just have no money, you know? Like, I want to get their shoes, but my mom's bitching about clean water. I don't know <laughs> what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. Um, here is uh, Eddie. So where would Chuck Taylor with Converse fall into that equation? Well, I don't know what the original deal was. I know this. Anytime you're doing a layup, there was a very good chance that your shoe could blow out. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and that's why all those guys from the 70s had terrible knee and Ankles. hip, ankle problems. Um, the canvas wasn't conducive to sports. Yeah, it didn't really. <laughs> what were they thinking? Um, There's not enough support, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I still wear them, but I also could not imagine... I don't know, running in them or doing anything athletic. In yeah, them. well, no, yeah, you wear them to look punk rock, not like the old Boston Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty punk rock, though. Yeah. <laughs> now, Kanye just put out a thing letting everyone know. He put this out on Instagram that he just finished the greatest album of all time. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Th yeah, finally. <laughs> You know what I mean? All these years have been waiting and waiting <laughs> yep. and waiting. Stop Music's fat, guys. Yeah. yeah. Stop listening to all this shit I've been listening to. <laughs> It's really been about 60 years of terrible music. <laughs> and now Kanye. Now, this has become one of the most retweeted things. That's his set list written in his crazy handwriting. It's worse than mine. And that's why it's famous, because Kylie was here. She wrote that, uh -huh. and all of her uh, girl followers retweet it. Gotcha. Two coming together. Yeah. She does have her pulse on the music industry. I'm, yeah. glad, I'm glad she's an EP on it. Song called FML. This means fuck my life. <laughs> I just uh, tweet to that entire family every day. Your dad knew that OJ was a murderer. <laughs> he knew it, and he profited. <laughs> Your dad hid the knife. <laughs> <laughs> he was at every day of that trial, just sitting next to OJ. And then when OJ was innocent, it seemed like they never saw each other. It was like I'm done with this. Yeah. They they have promised us that this OJ movie, as they claim, is going to be the worst movie ever made. And I hope they're right. <laughs> I want to see it so bad. Yeah. Now, Richard uh, Dreyfus is playing the guy who did the pyramid thing in New York. Remember when that pyramid scheme went on for oh, years? Oh, Bernie Madoff? Yeah. So I kind of want to see that because I used to walk past Bernie Madoff's building to go to work every day. And the paparazzi would be out just like crazy. Like there would be a hundred photographers. And if he came outside, you would, I, I would say that I saw Bernie Madoff, but what I really saw was a hundred people <laughs> with cameras over the head shooting. Uh, uh. It was the craziest shit, but it was very exciting for a while. Yeah. But there's, so I'm definitely going to watch that just because I walked past this house. That's enough reason for me. Looks like good casting there. Yeah. All right. I'm going to I'm going to throw this out there and see if anybody on the show can get it. When Richard Dreyfus went to Beverly Hills High, he used to hang out with two different people who went on to become famous. Hmm. Let's see if you guys can guess. Now you got to think of his age. This is tricky. So he had two friends two who, are, yeah. who are now 
celebrities. And have been for about as long as Richard Dreyfus has been a celebrity. Bill Gates. Why would Bill Gates? Uh, I, I, he's from L.A., right? No. Oh. The Great Northwest. <laughs> Got it. Wow. Well, if he's from L.A., why did he move up to Seattle or whatever? It's lovely country. Oh, yeah. He's Very pretty. Why don't right <laughs> well, you make a song about it? <laughs> Get it. Why don't you write the greatest Seattle song of all time? <laughs> that could be your job. L.A., they had to, so they're from L.A. because they're going to high school in Beverly Hills. Yeah. I mean, how how old would you say he is? 70? I was going to say Jack Nicholson, but he, he, he grew up in Jersey, right? Yeah. So why tell me things that it's not? I'm not looking for that. I'm going to give out hints now. Okay. I'm going to give a hint. One is a actor, but probably even more known as a film director. The other is a comedian. Rob okay. Reiner. Rob Reiner is correct. Holy oh, shit. my God. Oh. I need one more. And the other is a comedian. Mm. Um, who has changed his name since high school. In high school, he was known by his birth name, Albert Einstein. Albert Brooks. And now you know the rest of the story. Oh, my God. Correct. You did it. I like that, Joe. Wait, you wouldn't have got it until I said Albert Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> why, are you, why are you bragging? And why are you running down Joe? Yeah, he you're played you that leader. nice little drop. You're supposed to be a leader of men. He was just throwing it in my face when he got the other thing correct. No, I don't, no, I don't, I don't think he remember was. that he was, at all. He was so gracious. He was a really gracious I gave runner. you a correct horn <laughs> to let you know. Um, greatest, greatest album of all time is about to drop. Can't wait. Kanye. Can't oh, wait. I guess this is the only thing I'll have to listen to for the rest of my <laughs> yeah. life. Yeah, why would you listen to anything I'm else? I'm going to stream this thing constantly. I'm going to put on the fourth best <laughs> album of all time. <laughs> why? We have the best right here. Yeah. I like the fourth best. Less pressure, yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to put on Rubber Soul again. <laughs> <laughs> Rubber Soul is, by the way, also what Kanye's shoes are made out of. Perfect. No wonder they're so successful. Mm. The success is in the rubber. All right. Who's more annoying, Kanye West or Cam Newton? Because really, Cam Newton is the Kanye West that we try to root against him, but he keeps succeeding. I did like that dab. You did? Yeah. During a game. (laughs) I'm going to say Kanye West because he has has more. He's around more because he's not just around during the football season. He'll be around all year long. Well, who gives a fuck around him? It's easy for me to dodge Kanye West. I've done it his whole career. I can't dodge Cam Newton. <laughs> He's everywhere. He's everywhere <laughs> that I'm watching. The only thing that I can't fast forward. <laughs> and now I'm hearing about sliders. Mm-mm. Right, what else you want? North know. Carolina food. Yeah, what, what you kind of those North, What kind of North Carolina? Oh, they have their own. Uh, North Carolina is very well known for their own style of barbecue. Okay, I like that. Yes. I think it's, isn't it vinegar based, their yeah. barbecue? Hmm. Yeah, and now all of a sudden you're not so excited, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Dip some more in that vinegar. <laughs> Get it up in there. Make sure it doesn't taste so good before you start chewing on it. <laughs> this tastes too good. Give me some more of that vinegar. <laughs> so we've got, here's what I want to do, and this might be perfect for you. We've got to book somebody who understands and puts out style for black people and try to figure out why there's this gigantic riff. I mean, I understand that 19-year-old white boys will dress like that. Now, I prefer, if if I think any kind of black style that I like, it's Cedric the Entertainer who did the smart thing of, Chopping the sleeves off of a jacket. You know what I mean? Which is always great. But Cedric is always looks relaxed in his suit. There's always plenty of room in his suit. He's also very uh, monochromatic. Now, you're going back too many years for... Yeah, look at Cedric with the... With the... stuff. That's not a vest. That's a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> now, look how great all those guys look. The kings of comedy. They look great. Yeah. Fun, yeah. 
And Steve Harvey who, has his own clothing line. Who was your favorite of all the kings? Bernie. Bernie for me too. Over Cedric, because I love Cedric when he comes in. But Bernie was the fucking greatest. I adored that man. <laughs> Everything, anytime I come anything across anything on TV that he's on, I'll watch it. <laughs> I think that was a giant loss for comedy. Yeah, Bernie was the man. He was definitely my favorite. Yeah, he's so damn funny. So funny. Uh, by the way, I, we only brought this up for uh, a couple of moments yesterday, but Amy Schumer is uh, getting a, a Super Bowl commercial. I saw that. They, yeah. There was a, even a thing where there was a preview of her commercial. Yeah, do they normally do that? A <laughs> yeah. preview? For they want to get everybody excited. And then Joey Jojo tried to send this in today, something with like, giving away one of the commercials. I don't want to I don't want to see the commercials before the fact. I want to see them during the Super Bowl. Yeah, it takes away from, you know, the surprise. But the you everything. said it. <laughs> I know cuz I'm a giant Pokemon fan. Don't even well, say when that. I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn it. I don't know if back. Don't go online, Gail. Why do you like Pokemon so much? Uh, okay, so Ash Ketchum, the trainer of, you know, the main trainer in Pokemon, he was 10 years old when I was 10 years old. And so you everyone, <laughs> if, yeah, we, tr- you know, so let yourself laugh at him, squirtled sure. a little bit. But why, why is that? Because you're the same age as somebody makes you excited. Yeah. It made me. Yeah. That, so I got into Harry Potter too, because they were 10 when I was 10. And, and here's were, the thing, you know, all those yeah. people are successful. Yeah, I know. And you're trying to figure out how to fucking do your job and the interns since I brought him in here. You'll never have the success of Ash Ketchum. <laughs> Nobody. You look all well, the fucking Pokemon he caught. He's such a good trainer. He caught them all. <laughs> he had to. His Pokedex was full. <laughs> Completely <Pokedex>. full. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, what was the point of everyone falling in love with Pokemon? Um, well, there's lots of, like, cute little creatures. Yeah. Japan was in then, too, yeah. That all could only say their own name for some reason. <laughs> the Game Boy game is what made it explode. Yeah. Because everyone had the Game Boy game when I was growing up. I played Pokemon Snap. Yeah, oh, that was so much fun. <laughs> was that it was like a photography yeah. game where you were you no, were catching yeah. them, but you were catching them by taking there photographs. Was like no of them. winner to lose or anything. You just rode around on a track taking pictures. So it, it, it was basically <laughs> baby paparazzi. <laughs> so you would take your po- Pokemon yes. paparazzi. It was TMZ for digital oh animals. Oh my god, yeah. I loved it. Yeah, that's so <laughs> good. Oh and my should... god, I really wish I could play this right now. <laughs> Go ahead. Leave. <laughs> See if anybody knows. Knows. I doubt it. <laughs> oh my god, the Snorlax is coming up soon, guys. <laughs> so this is, you just, instead of shooting him, you take a picture? Yeah. There he is. Peter loved it. Yeah, yeah I'm sure they would. <laughs> Get that Butterfree. Yeah. You know what the name of it was? Mm-hmm. I know it's pre-recorded, yeah. but I'm so excited about this right now. Oh, I thought we were playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. How did he miss that? There's going to be some blows. dough. This is some things. I don't remember. Um, John, what's up, buddy? Hey, Bennington. What's up? Hey, Ronnie, Gail, I want to thank you all uh, for introducing me to Blue Apron. I, I got that for my mom for Christmas for a month, and it's all she talked about. Yeah. It's such a good I'm, gift, right? It was awesome. It really was. It was the best thing I've, I think I've ever done for her as a son, it seems. Uh, but she really, really enjoys it. She's got a little pattern set out because she's single, so it's for two people, so... You know, she cooks it and then freezes it and then thaws it out and has leftovers. And every every Thursday, she calls me and tells me she's got the box and it's amazing. That's so great. That's so man. sweet. That's the way I feel about it, though. Every week, I know. I still I'm the love same it. Way. By the way, I this really... weekend I made the the pizza. Do you it, love it? Was so crazy good. I think it's maybe one of my favorite ones that we've ever done yeah. with them. And like the I said before, I never would buy that kind of pizza on my own. You know what I mean? The salmon is on the top of her list so it's far. Sa- it's the best salmon that you can ever get. That's the yeah. thing. It's like, you can't get salmon that good at, at your market or whatever. So and, if- of, of course, the portion sizes. She keeps talking about how big they are. And I don't want to sound like a commercial for them, but thank you guys so much for the talking about it. And it was the greatest gift I got somebody. I'm glad to uh, hear that. Thank you, John. Talk to you later. Right, I give your mom our best. I will do. All right, peace. Now I feel like I'm down splitting a meal with her. I know. 
<laughs> I don't even know what we got coming into us this week. I don't know about what's coming up. I remember seeing it last week because they let you know a couple yeah. weeks ahead, and I remember thinking that it was a very good week, and I was excited about it. So I'll have to check that out. You know what? Uh, uh, seasonally, this has been one of the best seasons, too. Yeah, I would it's agree. Been great. All right, we got a break here. It's uh, the Bennington Show. When we get back, uh, there is some mysterious Britney Spears bikini videos. Oh. She looks fantastic, by the way. Um, everywhere but her brain is just so fucking gorgeous. <laughs> but she put them on uh, Instagram. Uh, you can go over and see them on the iBang, and we'll talk about it when we get back. It is the Bennington Show. Surfers, they surf around. I wonder if you ever meet a surfer who only listens to surf rock. That dude would be cool. <laughs> Coolest. Just surf rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is the Bennington Show. Uh, you know, Big Jay Okerson has a uh, his first big Comedy Central special. I've been hearing about people flying in. For the event. They're Ooh. so excited. I shall be attending. I never do such things. Really? Yes. Nice. You got to support. Uh, let's get Big J in here. Okay. Pronto. Um, can you get him in by two? That's in 20 minutes. Yeah. I don't think I can. Get him Wake him up out of his comedian nap and get him to stop in here. I will get Big J in here. In 20 minutes? Not in 20 minutes. How many minutes? What if I gave you 25? Is it ease it a little bit? Make it a little easier for you? It does you? make it a little easier, but I still don't think it's going to work. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely going to go to that. Also, uh, I'm planning to go seeing uh, My Wife Hates Me show. Yeah, My Wife Hates Me Valentine's Day special, which is hosted by you. So you probably should go. Well, yeah, you're right. And if it's, it's hosted by me, I better be there. You've got to be there. It's happening uh, Tuesday, February 9th at 8 p.m. Doors are at 7 p.m. Can't wait for that band. So make it your beeswax to be there by 7. I hope they do Soul Kitchen, <laughs> you know, since that's an original. Bam, 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 bam. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to be hosting, I'm going to check in with Rich. If for the one night I can't change it to Our Wife Hates Us. <laughs> And make it seem like we all live together. Who are those people? They seem oddly familiar. Is that one of those duck colors? <laughs> I believe it's a duck man. You know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Duck, duck Dynasty. Dynasty. That's got to be Duck Man. Duck Man, you're great, dude. Hey, Duck. Duck the ride? No, don't, don't kneel down. I'm calling you Duck. <laughs> and then the blind looks like Carol Miller. I don't know whether it's all Why coming together. together. And who's that with the sweater just walked by? That's Dan the Man, Load Boy. Oh, Dan, my man. And don't call him Load Boy because he does a lot of stuff for us. No, he yeah. He's, He's the fifth Beatle. I didn't know. I didn't recognize him from behind. What was it? Was he stopping by to see you, Joe? Yeah, he was stopping by to uh, just uh, go over the first segment. What you should love for it. Do you uh, do you text with him? Uh, yes, I do text with text him. Text with him right now that Ron just called him the fifth Beatle. All so right. He likes it. I'm going to do it right now. Yeah. Let him give, you know, he's young. Let him know who the Beatles were. Don't, don't let him know that's right. a good thing. I'll Just explain like the Beatle and their history to them. Well, Send them like a couple run. songs. Yeah, <laughs> songs and I guess their Wikipedia page. I'll recommend early and later stuff. What would you recommend early? Um, Anything from with the Beatles, If I Fell in Love With You. I love that one. That's a, that's a nice one. Mm -hmm. I love that one. You're a romantic. You yeah. are. I really am. You should have been in the 80s band, the Romantics. He's good with the ladies. Yeah, and he's tech savvy. <laughs> Sharp as a tack. He's everything. Yeah. <laughs> that squad really relies yeah. on your right. skills. Can I tell you something? Stop Char stop texting Charlie for two seconds and give it to Dan. <laughs> Dan's our man. Fifth Beetle. Bam, bum, 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 bum. So anyway, my wife hates me, Valentine's special. I am going to be there. Now, we said... Uh, we. Okay, so who's that good dude? Uh, Lieutenant Colonel James Wiley. What's he doing? Selling duck calls? Uh, I googled him. I can't even find anything about him. <laughs> he seems like Lieutenant Colonel is kind of a badass thing to be. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, unlike you guys, I support the troops. You do. I need to get better at that. You know, uh, the guy from the office did the Benghazi thing, and I saw him, and he goes, 
His biggest problem is everyone doesn't support the troops. I'm like, I thought that's all we've ever said for the last 20 years. Support the <laughs> troops. I never run into anybody who says, you know what? I don't support the troops. I don't want to pay for them when they get back, but I do support them. I support them in spirit. <laughs> Smells like teen spirit is what I'd yell out, which was a very big song during the 90s. <laughs> now, uh, we, speaking of during the 90s, uh, America's favorite a uh, young girl in the 90s, Britney Spears, has grown into a woman now. And look at these crazy, hot, maniac videos Jesus that she's Christ, doing. These Wait, are she's all sweaty. Are these recent? Yes, this, is, this just came out on her Instagram. Fuck. She looks fantastic. Well, her dad is in charge of feeding her and making her do exercises. <laughs> She's worth like $190 million and she can't touch her own money and she doesn't even bitch about it. She's like, okay. Good. Gotcha. I wouldn't know what to do with it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I can't believe these are recent. She looks fantastic. She looks great. Well, you know, she's got that Vegas show where yeah. she uh, lip syncs her big hits. It's, it's like the lip syncs show. <laughs> like she has to dress up like Britney Spears and go out and lip sync her. Her songs, but the place packs out. People love to go. She's the one from that entire era of young girl pop stars. She's the the queen of it all to this day. Yeah, she she really well. She beat out Christina. Well, everyone said Christina's got more range and she's a better singer and she sings better songs. Doesn't matter in the hearts of the American people. No. Once they embrace you and they take you on, you can get a lifetime ride. And Britney. She pulled that e-ticket. And they love, you know, they love that she had a little tragedy. Now, is this recent? Yeah, that's her Vegas uh, show. Hmm. What are you saying? Just saying it looks a little different than the shots. All right, let's go back to the, you saying she looks lumpier there than I think the she shots. looks a little thicker. Okay. Ain't no bad thing, but I'm just saying she looks a little thicker on stage than she does there. Okay, I see what you're saying. Now, I don't know whether these shots were weeks apart. I got a new guy running the computer, so this he's is a, pretty erratic. This is from a year ago, this video. Okay, so, oh, so she, she could have tightened be, it up She could have tightened up. She did yeah. the tighten up. You know, Vito's on a very uh, tough workout regimen. He says it's just working, just bang up for him right now. He's doing very well. He told me the other day he benched 85 pounds, and I go like... Whoa. Yeah. Eight? Five? Yeah. What are you benching? Uh, right now, I'm repping at about <laughs> 235. So Really? I yeah, That's I strong. Yeah, I was shocked that I could still do that. I don't know what my max is right now. I could probably I could probably do about 280, I would guess, if I had the max. 20 more pounds, and I'm going to be proud of you. Um, That'll be finally. the day. And then I'm just doing different circuit training and uh, different like high-energy uh, cardio, some sled pushing. <laughs> okay. Now, so, what are you doing for the glute crush? How much weight can you glute crush? I'm, I can I can do a whole watermelon at this point. So <laughs> that'd be fantastic. <laughs> I just actually sit at the uh, gym and I just fucking put watermelons in my my crush and I just squeeze it and stare at all. Here's the, women the thing: Why don't you just work honeydews for a while? I don't want you ever doing it. <laughs> then I want to work you up the cantaloupe, and then finally straight watermelon. <laughs> I feel like you're mocking him when he's doing really well. No, I'm supporting him. Oh, he well, took it completely the wrong way. <laughs> I thought we were mocking him <laughs> for being Vito, who I called Zito, and no one even corrected me. You know, everyone I just went, mm, okay. I, I really Zito didn't now. hear you. I've corrected you, you know, on it before. When? Once before. I you want said, you to correct me at least one between now and the end of the show. I want to be corrected on something. All right. I will do it. All right. So Gail's drunk. and I am the, not. Oh, perfect. See? I am stone cold sober. <laughs> Can you be Sober stone? as a... Church mouse. Church mouse? Yeah. School marm? Who's the sober one? Uh, I don't know any sober ones. No, there's school a saying. School marm's definitely buzzed. <laughs> yeah. Sober as a school marm is what I think it is. But... I'm not Brittany. <coughs> Are you a Brittany lover? I never cared. Uh, yeah, I don't think I was really... <coughs> that wasn't really my scene when and I was a kid. anymore? Still isn't? No, I support her as a human being. I'm glad that she's doing well for herself. I but I was not like a Britney kid. She was best with Kevin Federline. 
That was, that? The, that was the best era. I totally forgot about K-Fed, but he was a now. person. He's a DJ now. <laughs> what are we looking at here on... Uh... Is that Inception, the movie? There's actually like people actually live there? <laughs> crawling on that beach? Well, that, they're, they're saying that's a real place that looks like that uh, Inception beach. Where that just giant cliffs yeah. that are coming down oh, around wow. the houses. I'd Holy still, shit! I'd still sleep in that house, though. I wouldn't care. No! Yeah. <laughs> it looks so scary. Go yeah, but the it. view is amazing. The view is fantastic on your way <laughs> as you go crashing down into the surf. <laughs> So, Stanley, you've had a couple days of trying to come out of your party weekend. Yeah. And by the way, you've been on a binge run that I would say started at the Christmas party, but I think even earlier. Yeah, even earlier than that. What's What lit this candle? I don't know. It's just it's, it's the winter. The winter months just are bad I would for agree me. with you there that the winter months yeah, they are, get a little drinky. I mean, you started at the bottom and now you're... At a deeper bottom, really. I guess I just dug. <laughs> Whole crew at the bottom, now we're really lower. Whole crew at the bottom, now we're here. Most of them are Fuck, dead. we're here. <laughs> no, something lit your candle, though. I don't know. The winter, I, I just I, every winter's bad, usually. But this month, obviously, with the hospital stays really fucking terrible. But you're in a, your problem is, it's like... You're on the air is bad, but you're off the air is just atrocious right now. And you're, you were the guy, you know, and Joey Jojo is never going to be a step up guy. Vito will be once he gets some stuff, but Joey doesn't have the push, you know, he's not a people person. Well, I'm not doing step ups and pushing sleds like Vito every day, but, but you're not an aggressive, Hey, we got to get the work done. You're a. I mean, if anything, you're a good follower. You're never going to be a leader. Oh, no, I, I get everyone. You know, I tell everyone, I remind them every day. I write down a lot of notes. I'm like, They're guys, we got to get this it, done. They're not doing it, I, I, You know, the stuff I tell them to, they do. What do they call it when you when you bring everybody together and then you decide whether they're doing good or not? Was that? Like a review? Yeah, yeah. it's like oh. a review, but it's like something like that. We're going to do one on Joey whether he's not even going to be there. Good. Okay. And I'm just going to be me and Don today. Oh, no, a solo review? No, there's no solo. You're not involved. It's a Nolo review. Yeah. So a lot of that I'll say to Don, I don't th- I don't know if he does it, so let's just put down that he forgot, no matter what it is. And I, you won't be- he's on the glass. I did do that. <laughs> I can spread lips. Um, I know he's in here later and later every day, so you put in that he's in at 1230, <laughs> and he's out of here by two. Just because Most he- days. <laughs> he says he has a kid, uh, a a kid to pick up. <laughs> Um, here is, uh, Kevin in Boston. Hey, yeah. Gal, I just wanted to let you know the phrase is sober as a judge, not a school marm. It's sober as Mike Judge? Sober as a judge. I- so you actually start to use a phrase that you didn't know the end of. Yeah. I am as sober <laughs> as a bug in a rug. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin? Sounds like you're going to a yes, pretty sir. good prize closet, my friend. Yeah. All right. It's the pretty good prize it's the pretty good prize prize closet. We have pretty good prizes. It's the pretty good prize. It's the pretty good prize prize closet. We have good prizes. <laughs> Kevin in Boston. <laughs> he puts up Cam Newton dancing. <laughs> Am I going to have to watch this six, seven times Probably. during the Super Bowl? <laughs> I'm just dancing on the grave of that poor old man. <laughs> What's up, Kevin in Boston? <laughs> you win a pretty good prize. The signed DVD, Lost in Translation, sl- signed by Mitch Glazer. All right. Uh, this is the uh, Bennington Show. Uh, by the way, we, have we ever heard back from Elizabeth? Did she get her stuff? Yes, she did. Very happy. How come we never talked about it on the air? Did she know the extras that she got? No, she know the one extra. The other extra I was talking about, we gave it away a while ago. But the initial extra. She oh, loved. dude, you realize how fucked up that is. So you didn't get the thing that you told me. No, no, that yeah, that the DVD, yeah. But oh, the but, lesser good one that oh, you, the shitty that one. you the shitty one, yeah. Oh, okay. But the great one, yeah. So then she why did you replace that with something? Because I said three on the air. Joe, you just told me that you sat around covering for this fucking alcoholic, right? Yeah. And then I'm just hearing him say stuff. That how many times do I say 
fucking under promise over before. I say two on the air. So then if you get one great thing, you're like, oh, this is shitty. They said fucking, you know, three. Uh, all right. She, uh, I think she tweeted out that she got a queen DVD and a shirt. All right. Anyway, the point of this is this, there's going to be show reviews that go on without anybody being there today. Just done. Mm. I hope I do okay. I didn't even know you were up for review, but now you are. What? <laughs> Shit. You know, you kept your mouth shut, so you're not up for a review. Lucky. Oh, that's it. You're oh! up for a review. Oh. Join the review crew. <laughs> it's my stable. Don't worry, I'll do Chris first, and we'll be so excited, uh, so exhausted that we won't be able to move on. You guys are welcome. Now, with a non-football weekend, are you going to drink just as hard? No, I'm going to <laughs> calm this the fuck down. Yeah, non-football weekend. I'm not sure what I'm going to do to fill my weekend. So you really feel like you're out of control with your drinking? Uh, it's not. It's, you know, it's, I'm looking forward to the uh, shutdown, the eight-week shutdown, the cleanse. I'm looking forward to it. So as as of right now, I'm just letting it fucking go. I'm just letting it rip, sadly. But I'm looking real what's forward. He, what's he talking about? <clears throat> Speaking of me in a non-fucking thick alcoholic tongue, what is he saying? He's saying that he's going pretty hard right now because he knows he's going to dry it out, even though that's not the smart thing to do. But he is looking forward to the time oh, where he's okay. going to dry it out. That's what I meant. Don't add. Okay. Uh, I get it now. Um, all right, I'll tell that to Don. See what Don thinks about it. In the meantime, Joe, you got to cover for him until the Super Bowl. I'm going to. Because he just can't do it. Yeah. We can depend on you? Yeah, I'm going to make a producer's email today for Vito, me, and Chris. So that way you can check on his work, and we won't have the... One of these things I said, you get back to that person, and he goes, I'm dodging him. I go, this isn't your parents not paying their fucking electric bill. We have to get back to people. Da, 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 da. All right, Angie in Jersey wants to add something. Angie! You, you know, I've never heard that before. Thank you. That, that never happens to me. All right. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you. It's um, too late. You heard me. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't say song. it, Ronnie. Ronnie, don't say it. Wait, so Kevin Hart has a signature shoe from Nike, and it's a pretty cool shoe. Now, as, is this why Kevin's been doing his runs and stuff like that with his Instagram followers? Like, He'll get together and they'll all run a 5K with him. When I don't know about that, but I yeah. have seen him like in the gym. I've like seen photos of him in the gym where he's wearing these shoes and he's like lifting weights and stuff. Well, have you ever seen him play basketball? No, but I heard he's kind of nice. He's really good. I uh, I always watch the NBA celebrity game. Matter of fact, I think this is the first year that he's not doing it, and he can really play. Um, you know, he's. Not the tallest guy. I mean, he doesn't get a lot of boards. Uh, but, no, but he's fun to watch. Yeah, he's great. Uh, this is his world right now, too, Kevin Hart. Yeah, I like that guy. Yeah. He's a likable guy. And I love you guys. All right, thank Take you, Angie. Easy. Okay, bye. Bye. I should have gave her something. I want to see if the spreadsheet's still working. <laughs> it's a pretty good press. Press closet. The uh, world's uh, doomsday clock is getting an update, um, which is another reason to run your credit up as high as you want to. But I think we're like two minutes to midnight. Is that it? As of last year, we were three minutes to midnight. From down up from five, down from five. I'm not sure how it's used. But yeah, so we're at three minutes till I guess the end of the world is what they're saying. Well, the world won't end. They were saying these human beings would end. The world will still be here. Right. We don't have enough to blow up the world. Meteors hit this planet. The world's still here. It's us. We're out of here. The human species. Society done. We restart anew. This time, I believe it'll be the bees. They can't be. Bee world? Mm-hmm. This will be bee world. Why? We had a planet full of lizards for fucking <laughs> long billions of years of nothing but giant fucking lizards. Seems it like seems much- embarrassing to me. <laughs> That we, <laughs> we, 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 we actually live on a lizard planet. 
<laughs> Elliot showed up. They just showed up then and just went, this is Ew. disgusting. <laughs> These, filthy, These filthy lizards. <laughs> the whole planet is a zoo. All right, let's play this game. How will the humans die out? What will happen to us? Could be disease, could be war, could be whatever. There, We heat up the planet. I'm going to go with polar ice caps melt, water world. Full what, on water world. What about the people who have boats? There are always going to be mountains still. Yeah, but. The mountain people will survive. Look, my way of thinking, if 90% of the planet is wiped out, that's... That's not us being a stink. That's just 90% of the people being gone. Right. You know, if I've been at a party, 90% of the people were gone. Doesn't mean I'm going to stop partying. Mm -mm. You know what You're I mean? You're going to party harder. I'm going to at least party hardy. You know what I mean? Marty. More party for me. Good. Go home, pussies. You're <laughs> fucking slowing me down anyway. <laughs> Joe, uh, Gail's got polar ice caps. Melt. People can't swim. <laughs> what do you got? Okay. I'm going to say a world war. All out brawl between countries ready to rumble kills everyone. What you're just saying is nukes. Nukes get fired. Yeah, nukes. Yeah. Be but like future nukes. Bane at it in each other. <laughs> what? Just because you're stupid, don't, don't, don't talk slower. That's just more annoying. <laughs> I was just right, trying to lay it out. What you got? It's obviously going to be a pandemic. And well, the entire, like with the. See, this is why we keep ticking. There's plenty of ways for us <laughs> to be wiped out. I mean, there's super bugs all over the place. We're just a ticking time bomb. It's a doomsday clock. There are super bugs, but what was the worst we ever had all time with that? The Black Plague? Our Black Plague, something like 20% of the people in that part of the world still, you know, it, it didn't come close to wiping us out. Yeah, it would have to be a total wipeout for I, us to count. Now, Chris, this is your story, right? Yes. Where do you think the clock's going to go? It's, I believe it's going to go down closer to... To what, dude? To one minute. One minute? We're one minute yeah, away. We're one minute, yeah. All right, uh, Spy Report. Spy Report. They just announced that the clock's not moving at all. Oh, God damn it. That's not fun. <laughs> Either direction. You got to move it somewhere, Tom. We're safer than we've been in quite some time. <laughs> or at least as safe as we've always been. I'm going to tell you something right now. I think if I had to put up with any of your guys' stuff, I'd rather have the nukes. And, and the world melting, then everyone gets the flow. Yeah, that's That's terrible. disgusting. I don't want everyone to get the flow and die. Because with Waterworld, you have a fighting chance. You might survive, you might not. Right, there's some excitement to it. But the thing where you're like, oh, I'm so sick, and then people are like, I can't take care of you, I'm sick, though. <laughs> well, what are we going to do then, lay here? Die. Just die. Die of dehydration. <laughs> Where's that sharp knife? <laughs> I think I've got a cure for this. Um, Scott, Scott in Tennessee. I don't think humans will ever be wiped out ever. I mean, we our population may be reduced, you know, substantially, but we'll never be wiped out. Diabetes will get some people smoking, you know, so on and so forth. But there'll always be little pockets of people. All right, first why? of all, smoking is not going to wipe out giant parts of it. But the thing I is, know, but, but the, the thing point. is, this: what about a giant meteor hits the planet? And there's just no way for any life to survive. That can happen. Well, you say that, but then go to the tundra where people actually live. And what, what those people just bury? You know, I mean, I don't, know. I don't think it will ever happen. Wait, what, 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 we're not talking about the tundra. We're talking about the kind of thing that wiped out the dinosaurs. Yeah, that was a, that was a winter. It was, a, it was an everlasting winter. And that's pretty much the tundra. And if those people go on underground. No, but, but you can't breathe the atmosphere. There's... Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and nothing can live. And there's no sun. That's, that's why you go underground and you, you get stuff that will grow underground. Mushrooms, you know what? I'm going to say can. this for you, Scott. You're an optimist. That's why <laughs> I like you. Scott, I don't want to live in a mushroom world <laughs> I do. where all I can eat is fungus. <laughs> it doesn't do. need sunlight. I like where Scott's coming from this. We're going to be uh, underground mushroom meters. Isn't that good? Listen, I like a mushroom as much <laughs> as the next fella. I like an umami well, flavor, believe me. A little garlic, white wine. Uh, all right, I like his optimism that life will survive and man will survive. Life will find a way. Yeah. All right, Scott, I like what you're saying here. Here's uh, Gary in Rochester. Hey, you guys, um, do you, are you aware that 
we're actually in another uh, geological epoch. Well, well, explain it to us, because the answer is yeah, no. So- <laughs> <laughs> you have shocked me, sir, about literally every word you just said. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently in the 1950s, uh, we went to a new epoch that's called the Anthropocene era. And it, it basically deals with uh, the era in which human activities started to have a significant global impact on the Earth's ecosystems. Now, um, you, you realize a lot of people disagree with you 100%, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm fully aware of that. Yeah. Now, Neil deGrasse Tyson is on your side. B.O.B. completely goes in the other direction. So, <laughs> but it, it does make sense to me. I mean, if all you have to do is fly over this country, let alone this world, to look down and go, man, the humans are really shaping this differently than it it would have looked a hundred, two hundred years ago. Absolutely. You know? I mean they're they're you know, the the main thing is that is being said, I guess, is Earth the Earth's atmosphere uh has changed so significantly because of because of human beings and, you know, the Earth itself that uh they decided to come up with a new name, a new epoch. Now uh uh, Scott from Tennessee said that really we're going to be mushroom people anyway, so it's fine. Yeah. Um, which I like the idea of living underground, you know, in the tunnels. Cozy. Uh, and eating mushrooms. <laughs> Another portobello steak? <laughs> yeah, I guess like so. Hobbit. I had one for breakfast, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, Gary, are you thinking uh, it's over or we're still going to survive somehow? Oh, I know. It's over. All right, thanks, dude. Say, I heard from an optimist, now a pessimist. Um, let's go over here to uh, Sal in Jersey. Hey, Sal. Hey, what's up, Ron? I I think that it's going to be a combination of things, and it's going to be like a domino effect. First, the meteorites, then melt the solar ice cap, then there'll be lack of medicine, the epidemics will take over, and it's going to be just, you know, one thing after another. It's a perfect storm of terrible. So, so everything's going to happen? Everything, yeah, all I want. <laughs> it's the four horsemen's coming. Four horsemen of the apocalypse. Pale horse. All done. That, well, that's what it says in the books. Yeah, pestilence, yeah. meteor man, ice cap dude. And only the Catholics shall be saved. No, not even them. They're what? the first to go, <laughs> trust me. What? First what? to go? Why? <laughs> But believe <laughs> Catholics over here. Are we on the are on our way to uh heaven? No, death chambers. <laughs> what? But but somebody <laughs> don't want to but they <laughs> but they have, uh, all that Catholic stuff. I watched the uh new T V show last night, Lucifer, where Lucifer has left hell, lives in Los Angeles and is now solving crimes. But what? Uh, Should yeah. we be committing them? Really? Yeah. Helpful? What's in it for him to solve a crime? Um, but I will. Uh, well, because he's kind of fallen in love with this incredibly good person, and he wants to take a vacation from hell. All right. Even though father is not happy about it, nor is this other mean black angel, who looks like he's going to be starting shit all the time. <laughs> so, but another chance that in you know this must have been filmed a while ago. Bowie song just springs up after out of nowhere. So I'm like. I'd come in here and say this. It's so awful. <laughs> it's so awful. And I hear Bowie, and I'm like, oh, God. Mm. There I go. Um, there's Bernie Sanders, and he's going like this. Look, if Bloomberg comes into this, I need a little bit of money. Um, I can't do it all. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, do you care about your country? Let me just say that this Bloomberg is like putty. He comes around here. <laughs> And he sits on the couch and doesn't even watch TV. And he breaks up with Elaine and then he's back with her. All Seinfeld references in this press conference. <laughs> you know, in a certain episode that I always enjoyed. Um, Justin in Philadelphia. Hey, how's it going? Um, you know, the disease is an ever-changing evolution that we can't keep up with and uh you know the destruction of the rainforest is is a problem as well and we're getting the majority of our um 
disease prevention medicine from that rainforest, but with the destruction of them, it's just it's just creating the lost opportunity to find those cures for the evolution of disease. And uh, But let's look at it this way, Justin. If you were the planet Earth, the disease would probably be the human beings, right? That would be the thing eating the rest of your nutrients up. Yeah. So where we're the problem? We need the white blood cells to come in. Tag Let's us. not be racist about that. You know, <laughs> all blood cells, and even no matter what sexual orientation, they're all equal. Some are just a little more equal than others. <laughs> yeah, but to himself. <laughs> loud. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> Wait my, a minute. My, Hold on. Gail reads my blood cells. <laughs> yeah. My, my sexual blood cells still need help fighting off the disease. And, uh, you know, we provide for the planet and the planet provides for us. So us destroying the planet and we're destroying ourselves in return. So, I saw a TV show that said Christ is going to be back very soon, though. And he doesn't really care what shape the planet's in. Oh, good. Uh, you know, when's he going to be back? I, you know, I think he did. I heard any done. day now. Wow. From the show I, I was watching. Done. Oh, God, I got to clean up. <laughs> All right, guys. You guys have a good one. <laughs> Justin, it's a little bit of worry about. We need to take over that rainforest by an attack on South America. <laughs> and then we put a fence around the rainforest and we keep them out. And we keep it like a little garden. Don't anyone go into that garden. Mm-mm. Hey, I'll be in there later to pick out medicines. And fruits. <laughs> yeah, fruits, <laughs> sure. And those uh, little fish to swim up your dick. If you oh, into the water. God. Why does it even exist? Why does anything exist? What do you mean? Especially the dick monster. <laughs> Not a dick monster. It's just a fish. CNN says that Trump is at 41 days before the... 41% just days before the Iowa caucus. I don't know whether that's him in Iowa. But now they're saying that... I can't even look at these crazy What's things. This is too, That's, too this many numbers. Happening. Let's see if each of them get in before extra polls of what happens if Bernie Sanders is running against dead groups. <laughs> That's just a waste of my time. It's just hypotheticals here? Come on. Look, and here's the other channel. MSNBC has went to Queens residents complaining that the streets aren't clear. <laughs> Why would that be on a national thing? Is that me? I live out right outside uh, where Shea Stadium used to be. And look at all this snow. This is ridiculous. It's all full. Thank God Bernie Sanders is going to try to be the presidential nominee. Almost like a real complainer, though. Well, everybody in Queens is. Yeah, they're the worst. By the way, Glenn Miller played. Look, look at this. Could you drive down this street? Mm -mm. No. Thanks, Obama. This is crazy. (laughs) They act like they're going to clean the streets. That's hilarious. They won't. <laughs> it's me, Bernie Sanders. I want to be your next president after Barack Obama. <laughs> Obama. <laughs> <laughs> president uh, Obama. <laughs> uh, Jim in Missouri. Hey, I like your idea about the uh, rainforest. They could uh, do like a little diorama uh, with the uh, Amazonian people in it. Um, like they did with, uh, did you ever hear about that? With the, uh, New York Science Museum. They had, uh, some live Eskimos in a diorama. <laughs> what year was that? Uh, I think it was in the 20s or 30s. So this would be the Museum of Natural History? Yeah. yeah and instead yeah, of, yeah. like, now they have just right. little figures. They that would... Would... Yeah, they brought back a couple of folks from their exploration and, uh, put them on display. And then they would bring the, the, the kids in to see it, and they go like this. All right, five minutes for closing. Everyone's allowed to throw a stick at the Eskimo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Help you. Who's got the best arm out there? Nanook, stand in the middle there so all the kids can get you. You know, I was just yep. watching Todd Browning's Freaks. Uh, it was just on Turner Classic the other day. And the fact that that was entertainment. Like, look at these ladies. Their heads are really small. <laughs> Step right up, everybody. Look at their small heads, the size of a baseball. <laughs> and this was just in the last century yes. that we did that. And the weird thing about those th- those girls, they were so happy in that movie. Yeah. They were just like waving at the camera and other people. They were like, hi. <laughs> they were so adorable. They were really sweet. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I, that's not really the reason they called in. Well, it never is, is it? Oh, uh, 
I wanted to bring is up it money. Uh, is that what you want? You want to borrow money again? Any cash? I'm Don't always up for money. money. <laughs> um, but uh, the flu epidemic of the 20s, like, do you know what we did to uh, to count to actually uh, end that flu epidemic? Tell me. Nothing. Just let it run it, its course. It killed everybody. It could kill young people, old people, strong people. There were caskets stacked up all over the place. And nothing we did stopped it. It just ran out of people that were susceptible. Yeah, then the same thing happened in the Middle Ages. Yeah. And then Mm -hmm. you're kind of left with a stronger thing. But then there's a new disease. Now, you know, Chris shouted out moments ago, Lordy, Lordy, why is there a dick monster? But the fact is, you've got to wonder why there's any disease. There's got to be some kind of life purpose to disease. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just chaos. Or as you say, chaos. Well, (laughs) even if it is direct chaos, it seems like there would have to be a purpose besides... I mean, mean, we could look at birth and go, oh, I understand the purpose of that. But what is the purpose of disease to life itself? It's got to have some purpose. And I figure out I'm going to try to figure that out, but I got some of my shows I'm backed up on. I'm going to watch them first. (laughs) Take care of that. Yeah, I'm trying to keep up with, uh, I think it's called Billions. You like the Billions? Well, I saw Soder in it the other day. (laughs) Uh, He had just, it was, he just had one line, but he really did look like a Wall Street dick. You know what I mean? He played like a Wall Street dude, bro. You can see it's going to get better, but uh, he only had one line, but it was unbelievable. What was it? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Happy to resume him. By the way, uh, Big J should have been here 15 minutes ago. I, yeah. You said that you could get him. I'm going to get him. Do not worry. But it's not, not now. Bob. Bob. Yes, sir. How are you? What's up? How much? Um, I, just wanted to, I just got done reading a book by Graham Hancock, and he discussed uh, exactly what you guys are talking about now. Uh, he doesn't believe, nor do I, that there'll ever be an end of human civilization. Probably... What will happen is either a, catacly- a cataclysmic event such as another large meteor strike uh, will occur. And basically what happens with that is it, it touches off volcanic activity basically all around the world, which then blocks out the atmosphere, which blocks out the sun, which eventually plunges us into another ice age, which humankind has lived through before. Um, and I'm, I, I don't believe for a second who, that the wipe us off. Grant Hancock. I'm gonna look this up. I'll Kindle. You look him up. He's uh, he's actually he's downloaded. He's been on uh, he's been on Joe Rogan's uh, podcast a number of times. The guy's fascinating. You would love to have him in. The guy's brilliant. Uh, I got a spy report right now, Vito. You're gonna have to stop being crazy back there. Uh, spy, spy report. report. Spy report. This is not a hoax. This has actually happened for real this time. Abe Vigoda has passed away. Oh, no. no. That is, if we are to believe, this is the 17th time. Um, It's confirmed? Yeah, TMZ put it out, and they never make mistakes. They're good. Hey, how's our buddy from TMZ doing? Is, is his TV show running? His TV show just started running. Adam, Adam from TMZ, yeah. yeah. Is he back here, or he's, is he he's, out he's, west? He just got back on the East Coast this week. We'll see if he wants to come in and promote us sometime. Cool. Uh, I love the kid. He's a really, really nice nice guy. Everybody thought that the TMZ people were going to be like National National Enquirer, but they're not at all. Yeah. They just are people that just ask famous people questions <laughs> and then break the occasional real story. But they never make up a story as far as I can tell. I've never seen them it's- do a weird story that turned out to be false yeah it seemed like early on their reputation was kind of like that where it's like oh it's on tmz who would trust it and that completely i think what we just never believed in rumor magazines but tmz never seems to make a mistake now if you watch their show you're like well that's not news you could say that plenty of days that they're just asking a rapper you know, some other nutty question. Right. And they do that, but then they will break a real news story and they've never fucked up. And I remember a little while ago, the rumor went out that New York Magazine was going to do this giant TMZ P 
piece, and then I, and I've never heard of that. Remember when that yeah, would come I, up? Yeah, and that, yeah, and then like uh, no one from TMZ like, was cooperating or whatever, and like Harvey was trying to go after him for it. But yet, you would think they would have put out an article by yeah. now. But yeah, a lot of times when you're doing investigative journalism, the person doesn't answer. If you had a real story, that wouldn't be the thing that stopped it. You wouldn't be able to say, well, we couldn't get John Gotti to say anything, so that's it. No story. <laughs> We're done. But even Gawker's screwed up, and they, they're in a giant. They're actually, they're actually they're taking like a $100 million lawsuit, but TMZ never gets hit. Well, the one with Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Uh, that'll start up, but it doesn't mean that they, you know, it doesn't mean that they're going to lose, but that Hulk Hogan thing is going to be a media circus, which the Hulkster couldn't be happier about. Oh, yeah. Good press. Oh. All press. We, uh, Your Honor, we'd like to call Coco Beware to the stand. Um, Play his music, please. Yeah. <laughs> now hit my music. <laughs> it's a very funny thing that you do when you say that. Does anyone get it? No, no one has ever mentioned it. I would imagine no Vito gets it, but the, no one has ever said. Vito saying, call me Zito. Who, which, who, what guy said hit my music? Ravishing Rick Rude. Okay. Oh, you fat, <laughs> stupid, no nothing. Lexington, Kentucky. You know, <laughs> they would pick out these Why really. Why hate our, yeah. our hometown? Stand there and watch what a real man looks like. <laughs> He's that was the ripped. best. Well, he might have been ripped, but uh, you would be surprised how light he was. Because I met him a couple times, and he did not. Carry a lot of weight. <laughs> Slight man. Yeah, I mean, he's, he had like the build of a swimmer. He really did. Yeah, he looks very ripped, but and he is. Yeah, but it's just the, the, uh, there's not a lot of size that goes along with that. <laughs> but those women would fall unconscious. The ladies and then he love would them. Dance his dick dance over top of. Them. Look at oh, the yeah. look at the eighties hair everywhere. I love it. Love that stash. And look who's with him. The brain. Oh, that neck breaking move. Yeah. That's such a straight porn look that he had, too. It's greasy. <laughs> but women were crazy about him, Chris. You can't fight that. Yeah. I mean, fucking. Really great swivel, too. I mean, oh. a lot of guys don't have the con- the hip control that mm. he had. Mm. Mm, or other mm. people's faces on I the like crotch. Him. Well, sometimes he would put a woman's face yeah. there. Somebody's girlfriend on there. Yeah, a lot of times. <laughs> and a lot of times even the girl would fall for him. <laughs> you know, I didn't like him at first, but then I saw my face directly on his crotch, and I thought, that makes sense. <laughs> Man, the brain was so... Look, the brain is good at just holding his coat. And then just pointing at him, like, I can't believe how good Can you believe it? what I've just unveiled to the and world? Everyone said, you're wrong, Brain. You're wrong. We don't agree with you. Matter of fact, you make me think he's even more of a heel just by you standing next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the Brain's just onesie. Brain. Just brain on he's it. the fucking bed. You know, uh, when I, this is probably late 80s, early 90s. Uh, I'm working at a radio station, and we become friends with the brain. And then he says to me, uh, I want to talk to your bosses. I got an idea for a show. And I go, all right. He goes, it's going to be me and my wife, and I have a newspaper with me, and we just sit and pick apart the newspaper, and we talk about it. So I, I pass it along to the bosses, and they're like, how is that a show? <laughs> and now... It's every podcast you've ever heard of. Yeah. You know, the, the brain was basically saying, what I do with my wife at breakfast is a show. And it was a hundred fucking percent right. Yeah, I would definitely listen to that show. The brain was the smartest person at branding and getting ideas across and basically manipulating the emotions of the people in the audience. He was phenomenal at it. Like I said, he could stand next to somebody and make that person feel, uh, make you feel like I don't like that person that the, the brain. brain said is good. And he, he had the best expressions. Like he never, even if he didn't have the mic, 
He was always shocked. Yeah, like he was always shocked. Or like he would do the like big over the top, like afraid yeah. or the- overly cocky face that he would do. I saw uh, the brain would also get beat out of any territory that he was in. <laughs> like when he left the job, he left in shame and put the job over and start the new place. And when he, when he was at WCW, he never would attack Vince. He didn't think that that was professional. And he would always let, you know, whenever he left the job, he would go over the top rope or whatever. And one time he was leaving. I can't remember where it was from, but he was carrying his suitcase. Yeah. And he was being <laughs> thrown out. And he would look back and be like, come on. And then he would just go back, walk a few more feet in shame. And, like, he gave that. Back to the business. He always thought that the business was important. And if people from Radio View would always just even pay attention to those type of things. That if you put the whole show over, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter how you're doing because because the tide's going to bring all the boats up. Right. But he was phenomenal about that. And, the, and that when you put him on the stick, no one ever in those years said the brain has a point because he was... When you thought he was selling the heel, he was selling the face. You know what I mean? He helped Hogan by screaming, Hulkamania is dead. That's it, kids. You'll never (laughs) see Hogan again. (laughs) Made children leap up in the air and, you know, cheer for Hogan. So he knew how to sell good by pushing evil. It's fucking brilliant. Yeah. It's complete (laughs) brilliance. Uh, Josh. Josh, how are you? Ronnie B. Yeah. Yo, you're absolutely right. Bobby the Brain was always my favorite dude in wrestling. Uh, I met him a couple times. He is. You're saying, what you're saying is absolutely true. He's like one of the smartest dudes in the world. Everything he said is like come to fruition now in the entertainment world. Yeah, he really, and he was always, uh, and I remember when the WCW was beating uh, the shit out of Vince, right? All we, because of Bobby. We, yeah, and we would go to matches, right? And I would talk to him backstage, and he's like, uh, this thing's done. I'm telling you. He goes, we don't even have a product. We have a show. We don't have a wrestling organization. We can't, you know, this thing, I don't. they're bleeding money. I don't know how they're going to do this. Everything that he said to me was uh, 100% true. That. And when everybody else said, this is it, we beat Vince, he was saying to us, this thing's going to be over within a couple of years. I'm saving every dime I have. <laughs> One of the reasons why he left, uh, and the only reason why he ever left Vince is because his neck got so bad that he couldn't take bumps anymore. And they still, you know, they still wanted him to come out and get, you know, thrown down WCW. I don't even think he was near the wrestlers. You know, he would come in, do his thing from the corner and split. But I, I don't think he was ever into it as much. But he, w- in my opinion, was a guy that could, if you would have given him an organization, he would have been Vince's biggest threat. I think he was that brilliant at that stuff. Dave in Columbus. Hey, uh, Ronnie. I yeah. was down in Florida down in the late 80s, and Bobby Brain, he, he was really larger in life down there because... Uh, sure. I, I was uh, I lived on Indian Rocks Beach down by Clearwater, and they had a big restaurant called uh, Krabby Bills. Sure, I know Krabby Bills. And they had a fundraiser <laughs> for this little disabled kid. And the governor showed up, Bobby Brain showed up, and the phones are ringing off the hook, all of them for the brain, not one call for the governor. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, that's the thing. He was um, he was one of the reasons I think wrestling got as big. As it did, we got a break here, Chris. Yeah, we got a break. One more. Time. All right, one more break. Uh, looks like Big J's. I mean, if he's not in by the end of this break, let's push him back till tomorrow. Oh, yeah, because this has gotten crazy. I, I, I implore people to go see his his stand up gig, though. It's going to be fantastic. That's happening February twenty first at Webster Hall. There's two shows: one at seven, one at eight thirty. Go to the entire bank dot com. That's all the details. Going to be a very very exciting night. Two shows: film for Comedy Central. As I said, people are flying in for this. This is uh, this is Jay's time, and he deserves it, and we all love him. Break back, Bennington. It's the Bennington Show. We're all friends and relatives. We can only stand each other for three hours a day. 
It's our but, superpower. But you know what's odd? Sometimes I think this may be the best three hours of my day. Aww. Oh, yeah. I spend the other three hours getting chemo, so. Oh. Wait, I'm only living six hour days? <laughs> <laughs> Too bad I didn't say 21. <laughs> or maybe you guys could have reacted a little worse than, oh. Uh, all right, it is the Bennington Show. I, You know, I think I joked about not being able to keep up with my TV, but it is really hard. Oh, yeah. There's uh, a lot out there. Yeah. And I won't give up on a TV show uh, immediately. That's why I'm still watching the Ray Liotta <laughs> Bad Cop with J-Lo. And I'm going to give Lucifer for another week. I haven't gotten into, I think it's Amy Tribeca. I tried the first episode, and I'm like, this is a little bit like Airplane. I <laughs> wanted it to be funnier than that. I'm one of the few people who never laughed at Airplane. Yeah. I, I actually yell out, that's stupid. All right, it's Angie Tribeca. What did I say, Amy? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I haven't seen the show yet. Well, it's on, mm-hmm. and it's not. It doesn't take place in Tribeca. I thought that it Stupid. would. Stupid takes place in L.A. At least the I, first uh, half of of an episode. I took your advice and I watched Baskets. What did you think? I know it will not be for everyone, yeah. but it is for me. Yeah, like I was really into it. Yeah, and I don't think that everyone is going to feel that way. But I would recommend it to certain specific people oh, that I know would yeah. be into it. Don't you think that's true of uh, of his comedy and Louise, um, you know, comedy of like, yeah, don't tell your parents you got to see Louis. You know what I mean? You tell people that you share that kind of sensibility with. You know what I haven't seen is uh, the big 90s uh, reboot, uh, Scully. The Scully's Files, I think, is the name of it. <laughs> X-Files, Ron. X-Files. Because I didn't watch it in the 90s. So I'm having a difficult... <laughs> yeah, I didn't either, actually. I'm booting myself up to watch it. I watched it every week. It was Friday nights, I think, at 9 o'clock on Fox. Watched it every single week. And so when the re- when the, they said they were bringing it back, I got so excited. And the first episode, I just like that the characters are back. <laughs> it might not be the best episode in the world, but I heard it gets better. But I'm loving this, this X-Files thing. Because so, I loved it so much as a kid. Who's your favorite character on the show? Oh, it's Mulder. It's Mulder. Mulder is the dude, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, David Duchovny. Now, I watched every single episode of Californication. I thought he was amazing in it. But I've never watched X-Files, the thing that really got him famous. He's great. And I it. like him in movies, too. No, he's, and he's great in the X-Files. He's awesome. And the character of Mulder's great. And, you know, the sexual tension between these two. Now, I never I thought watched... she was a lesbian. She was a lesbian for a little while, but then I think uh, she goes both ways. In real life or on the show? In real life. No, I'm talking about no. on the show, the character on the oh, show. Oh, yeah, she is a lesbian on the show. Okay, so why would there be sexual tension? I'd... That'd be like saying two straight dudes had sexual <laughs> tension. <laughs> wow, the sexual mm. tension between Vito and Joey? It's crazy. Oh, just have sex already. <laughs> is it that I noticeable? Can't take the tension. Just have sex and ruin the show. <laughs> Now, I didn't watch the show in the 90s, and I tried to watch the reboot. That was this weekend, right? Yeah. And I watched her maybe five to ten minutes and was so irritated how much they kept saying the characters' names. It was driving me. He'd be like, listen, Scully. And she's like, Mulder. Like, they ju-. And he's like, yeah. yeah, is that right, Scully? I'm like, why does he keep saying her name? Like, well, I guess we're it? reestablishing the characters, but... But here's the deal. I think like it was a big deal back in the 90s to call a woman by her last name. I think that's why the show was a hit. It's not stop. That was a big though. part of it. That and the aliens. You <laughs> wouldn't address anyone by name that many times someone, in a conversation. Someone told me that you don't have to watch the 90s to watch this. That's what they're saying. But so you don't believe them? No. I mean, look. I have a lot. I know all the characters or whatever, so it's it's fun. It's just, it's great to see them again. I didn't, I forgot how much I like the X Files. I just can't believe that you're saying that kind of housewifey. I, it's so great to see him again. I feel like crazy saying that. You sound like you should be you should be doing your periscopes while you're walking on a fucking sidewalk thing. All right, so uh, that has to be seen. But here's what I worry about. If that's a hit, and now there's there's that fake Friends reunion that isn't even a reunion, and some kind of a clip show. I'm worried that they're going to try to reboot the entire 90s back in North. Well, yeah, faces. and then there's the Full House thing too. Isn't Full House getting a? Um... That's right. It is Full House, a uh, uh, Fuller House, I think it's called. Is there any 90s show that you would want to see rebooted if you could? If you could, uh, the only one that I would get back into again, I think, is Monday Night Football. <laughs> um, Love it. Try to catch on. 
I mean, I guess the Cowboys are still dominating. And Favre and his Packers, you better watch out for them. Uh, a 90s, well, I mean, to be honest, does it feel like Seinfeld or Friends has even went away? No, it's very present. Now, was there a 90s drama besides this show? The, oh, they're bringing back Twin Peaks. Yes, Twin oh. Peaks is the other one. But without David Lynch. So, mm. so it's going to be even better. No, thanks. No. It's not going to have his weirdness all tied in with that. That's what was good about that's it. That's what we like, the weirdness. I don't know. What was some of those other big 90s? ER. ER was the biggest, right? ER. Uh, I'm going to, this is the truth about ER in the 90s. I only watched one episode, and that's the one that they did live. Oh, I that's that why episode. going live does matter. I'm like, I'm going to see this shit. See how they do it live. What if something goes wrong? Well, It'll you know, wrong. my other favorite, sh- my two favorite shows are done live. Saturday Night Live and Monday Night Football. Mm-hmm. I never tape Monday Night Football. I got to see, see it live. I feel too embarrassed cheering for something that already happened. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Just alone in the world. No one else has experienced I don't that know emotion. if there's another 90s show. I mean, you know... Uh, you guys brought up Pokemon and Joe was going crazy. Love it. He peed a but bit. I don't think you have a, a 90s TV show that you love that much, Joe. Yeah, I'm, I mean, Seinfeld and Friends would be they're there. Yeah, they're there. We don't need them to come back. They're there every night. Yeah, I th- I think my favorite was Roseanne, but I don't think I need a Roseanne reboot. That's too depressing. I would not want that. Especially after they killed off the dead. But I can say one that I would want to see rebooted. Okay. A little something called Freaks and Geeks. What there, if we brought back... Was that 90s or 2000s? Was that the year 2000? I feel like it's late 90s. 99, maybe. Even. 99. 99. You mm. pulled it off by the skin of your teeth. You got it. Did it. Uh, there, you joke about that? There's talk about doing something. I well, Apatow, you know, he's he's got the golden arm right now. You know, he's the guy with the golden arm. I mean, he shoots up heroin. It's going to be the best heroin ever. <laughs> so there is talks about freaks and geeks. All those kids went on to do interesting things. Um, Jessica. Ron, I have wonderful news for you. Yeah. David Lynch is going to do Twin Peaks. He's come back since that? He is directing it, yeah. Jessica, you're going to get yourself a pretty good prize. Woo! Neat. It's a pretty good prize. It's the Pretty Good Prize Prize Closet! We have pretty good prizes! It's the Pretty Good Prize! It's the Pretty Good Prize Prize Closet! We have good prizes! Jessica here in Chicago. But a sign, pretty good prize is coming your way. The sign book, Roseanne Arky, signed by Roseanne Barr. Whoa! Thank you. That was actually one of the best on Mass I think I ever did because she was so, she was so upfront. Yeah, it was a it great was one, one of the funnest ones for me. For me, just laughing where people because people have brought up so much over her over the years that you forget she's hilarious. Yeah, she's she's phenomenal, yeah, and I love that best. that on Mass was a blast. Um, all right, there you go. Thanks for that update too. So, uh, David Lynch, that means we will be watching Twin Peaks. But now I feel like I want to go back and watch the first season of Twin Peaks. And I don't think I ever re- watched uh, the Walk Through the Fire. Everyone hated it. Fire Walk with me. Fire Walk Under the Fire. Fire Starter. I'm a fire starter. A fucking fire starter. <laughs> so, Scully, uh, it's me, Mulder. Um, uh. Could you do me a favor, Scully? Call me back at Mulder. <laughs> Five six eight. <laughs> this is Mulder, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> and that's still Scully. Right. So it's Mulder and Scully, the X Files. Mulder, I'm Mulder. You're Scully. Sometimes I call you Mulder, though. Uh, here's my buddy Lois. Lois, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Um, I watched the first two episodes of X Files, and uh, it's pretty bad, man. The reboot. They're still using CG from like 1992. Oh, the CG's awful. Bad. Scully has had so much work done on her face that she has like no facial expression. Well, I like, like it better that way. I don't like to see people smiling or grimacing. So I, you hated it, Lewis, and 
Hicks, you're you're crazy about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. And yeah, are and you I'll, watching I'll it for entertainment or nostalgia? Because that thing of hey, it's just so great to see the old gang. That's not fucking art to me. Yeah, it's, I, I watched it back in the day, and um, they disappointed me so much at the last episode that I swore I was never going to watch it again. But I got curious out of nostalgia. Yeah, and they just totally flipped everything around. Now they're saying that there is no such thing as aliens. That the government has been doing all this stuff. And they even brought in some nine eleven stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, I heard they're doing a lot of nine eleven truth or material. They have like an Alex Jones like character. Lewis. Well, you know it's all going to come back to aliens anyway. I mean, that's just an alien conspiracy. I don't know that because I never saw the first one. So they were real aliens. Yeah, I mean, there. Yeah, it was always alluded to, and yeah, yeah, I know it was alluded to. That doesn't mean that there's really an alien. At the end of the first, at the end of the first X Files movie, a, a spaceship was was the found. movie, not even the show. Yeah, the, yeah, not not on the show, on the movie. Yeah, the movies when so they're you like, never see any aliens in the X Files. See like monsters and weird shit in the X Files, but not not, <laughs> not monsters like freaks, like freak monsters. <laughs> freak monsters. Yeah, the move. The show is very crazy. You've got to be the worst reviewer ever known to man. We're talking about the TV show. I yeah. forgot they made a fucking movie that bombed. There too, were two. Right? Yeah, there were two movies. Two movies that bombed. <laughs> the first movie came out like right after the show went went off went off the air, so like that did okay. But then the second one just bombed. Remember out. the David Duchovny "Why Won't You Love Me" song? Love. That was huge. I think it sold over four hundred copies. It made me like him even more. I, you would like David Duchovny. I think I as would. a person, like he's pretty cool. He's like a New York guy, and. um we lived in New York during the crazy days, you know, salad days, as you call them. He's really good in Zoolander. By the way, when Lewis uh, brought up um, that <laughs> Zoolander with his hand, in <laughs> I'm a hand jockey. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. The best is when he goes through <laughs> explaining why male models are the ones to yeah. do these assassinations, and then he says, "But why male models?" <laughs> David Duchovny is like, "Are you?" Are you serious? I, <laughs> I was like, I love that David Duke. Yeah, he's good. Why won't he love me? And no one could ever figure that out. That's the that's the biggest X file mystery of all. <laughs> um, but I gotta say this: the guy he always has something happening too. You know what I mean? Like there is nothing slow about his career ever. Mm-mm. That's the nineties, and he's always either had a movie. A hit TV show. The amount of people that have had two hit TV shows is not a long list. Um, here's uh, Don. Don, what's up? Hey, how's it going? What do you say? Well, what I'd like to say is Northern Exposure. I think it'd be an awesome thing to bring Dude, I back. never hear anyone bring up that show. <laughs> that show is, I watch it all the time. I yeah. watch that show, too. It was a great paced show. And... It was, you know, the fish out of water is always like, I'm going somewhere. I've set myself up in life so that I can excel at life. And now you're put in a situation where none of your skills matter anymore. <laughs> and you, you really are in a world going mad. And I would love uh, the DJ on that show that he would bring up. People are walking by. And he's just sitting there going, well, look who's walking by us now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's my that's my two cents. But I appreciate your show. Yeah, man that that show was uh, no that was on for a few years, right? Yeah, yeah, a couple seasons. That guy was actually in another hit show, but he was more or less the sidekick in Numbers. He was the FBI guy. Watch Numbers. He was the he was the funniest. So he's the badass FBI guy. And every week he couldn't solve something, so he had to ask his geekier brother. To figure it out. And his brother would solve crimes using numbers. Wow. Yeah. Why didn't he just like bring his brother into the FBI then if he was calling him all the time? Well, he was a consultant for oh. the FBI eventually, and they all kind of were friends. But he never got strapped and never was allowed to actually. And he would always stop things by going, look, we could go by and do this. And he would write up numbers. You think you get benefits, though? No, I don't think he got any bennies, mm. but yeah, he was working as a college professor, and I believe he was tenured by the end of the show. Oh, good. <laughs> you know why? So he's taking why? care of numbers. <laughs> the numbers see, did it. I would always tell, see, I teach a seventh grade class, and, you know, my geeks, I teach advanced physics to seventh graders, because um, they don't know what I'm, even if I'm wrong. <laughs> and I would say, look, they might call you geeks now, 
but later you'll be solving crimes. And how are we going to solve crimes? Numbers. Numbers. All right. No homework tonight. Yay! Because I'm the cool teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And when we come in tomorrow, we're listening to music. Great. Woo. Just don't tell your folks. I don't want them busting my sack over this one. <laughs> Numbers related music? <laughs> hey, you're one hot seventh grader. <laughs> um, <laughs> here is uh, Mark in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say Wings was a, was a pretty good show back in the 90s. Pretty good show. Was Wings 80s or 90s? I thought it was the 90s. 80s. 90s. Er, early, early 90s through like 97. How about how like Wings. the the stupid um, like mechanic on Wings became like a sex symbol and a fucking movie star. <laughs> yeah. And he was like the fifth lead on that show. Was like, what's this doofus doing in here? <laughs> oh, stupid's going to say something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at this dummy. <laughs> And then later you're like, oh, he's the breakout hit. It was Sad Man in the fucking comic book movie. And I think he was nominated for uh, Sideways. Um, Rich. Rich and Richmond. Chris and Richmond. Hey, Benny. Too. Rich and Chrisman. <laughs> hey, I, is David Duchovny going to make an appearance in the new Twin Peaks again? Oh, yeah, he was involved in Twin Peaks. He's a cool dude. He's always around when there's something awkward happening. Yeah. Did you ever see that weird kind of sex addict uh, end of the world movie that he was in with Tom Cruise's first wife? No. <clears throat> I don't know the name of it right now. Vito's busting his ass to find it. But he played another peculiar guy in that. He was just great. He's pretty much great in everything. Oh, yeah. We can't find that song, though, can we? Mm -mm. Because I wanted to end the show on it today. Wouldn't that be exciting? I would love it. Let you set it up. Um, here's uh, Steve to rebut our own Chris Stanley. Steve. Steve, PA. Hey, guys. You guys were talking about how the, uh, they made it clear there are no aliens in the new X-Files. Yeah, um, did. They, they took... They made it clear that the aliens did visit us, but... The government took their technology, and they were the ones doing the abductions from then on. Since mm. Roswell. All right, that makes more sense. Plus, Scully and that other girl, whatever, has alien DNA. Scully has alien DNA. Yeah. Yep. Why don't you tell us any of these things, what? Chris? Well, they like the actual Does aliens. She know that she has alien DNA. Yeah. Well, then yeah. why is she not? Why is she not believing in aliens? Because she's such a. Bitch that, that, that makes no sense. <laughs> They've been through so much, but she never believes in aliens. It's crazy. I always hate, it's like fucking any show that the people don't learn from the information they've been given. It's like um, Bewitched, his husband. It's just, yeah. he's just flat out a fucking <laughs> asshole. And uh, there was another uh, show where the girl from True Romance was, uh, she could talk to the dead. Oh, yeah, the Patricia Arquette. Um, I think it was called Dead Talkers yeah. or Dead Whispers. And her husband. Would never fucking believe her. I'm like, dude, you know that she brought your dad back. And yet you're still like, what are you, crazy? Talking to your dead friends? Yeah. She fucking sees them every week and solves a crime. Not again with this. <laughs> yes, it is still. And I'd be, I, anytime I turn on the show, I admit, I don't watch it a, a lot, but I'd just be like, divorce that fucking dick. He does, he's not supportive of you. Never be with somebody who's not supportive of you. That's my motto. Joe? Okay. The, these uh, one-night stands that you have. Yeah. Are they supportive of you? I mean, I guess until noon the next day. All right, but during that time, support. Yeah, super Chris, supportive. your imaginary girlfriend that you lied to us about, mm. is she supportive? Yes, she is. Even though she doesn't exist? She does exist. Then put her on scope. Find that song. Well, it's not the end of the show yet, is it? Just one. No, it's not. Why give it away? Why can't you? Do... You know, he beats you at the end of the day. Everybody gets one. <laughs> yeah, but this was your, this was the day that I was going to say Vito killed it. You know what I mean? Now, I see you glaring at him. Is there something you want to express, Gail? 
maybe you could have supported him by oh. sending it to him when you know he did so good today. He did really good until it was robbed of him at the end of the show. What a dick, Chris. Uh, we will have Big J Okerson on the show tomorrow. One more time, I want to tell people where they can get Tickets to his big stand up show. It's happening February 21st at Webster Hall. Two shows, 7 30, 9 p.m. And you can go to the interrobang.com, find all the details and the link to get tickets. It's February 21st at Webster Hall for Big J. Okerson's special shooting for Comedy Central. Well, it's something we should look into while we're plugging. Uh, and Gail, you wanted to bring up uh, something about Boston Bonnie. That is right. My wife hates me. Valentine's Day special hosted by Ron Bennington. Oh, thank you, everybody. Is happening Tuesday, February 9th at 8 p.m. Doors are at 7 p.m., so that's when you get there. Gail, I wanted to let you into the show with this song that Chris Stanley found. Mm. I guess Chris Stanley's still the best. He's the best around. Yeah. Chris Stanley gonna bring you down. Yep. He weakens his team by shining the spotlight on himself. It's interesting. It's a new way. I've got to look into that. Set us up. Take us home. Set David Duchovny. David Duchovny. Why won't you love me?